And we're live. Welcome to another edition of Watch Talk with the Punters. My name is Blue Shirt, and I'm joined by my co host, uh, Thomas Burnett. Good evening, everybody. Good day. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Exactly. And uh, our uh, guest today is um, Bruno, a.k.a. BDEV. Welcome, Bruno. Hi, everybody. We really yeah, appreciate great, you. Great uh, to be, Dev. Yes, yes, yes. And glad uh, to be here. Yeah, well, yeah. it's our it's our pleasure, and uh, you've got uh, quite an interesting collection that we're we're going to get to uh, explore later on. Absolutely. Uh, let me just say hello to uh, uh, some people that have tuned in. Uh, Clam Walker and and Lucian, what's up, guys? Yeah, um, how you doing, guys? How are you doing? Good to see you. Megan Arthur, always good to see you. Uh, Hi, Megan. Uh, Manor Joseph. Uh, JCB, what's up, pal? Good to see you. Forbin Colossus. Yeah, Forbin. Underachieving Watch Collector, always good to see you. Yeah. Uh, Al29. Uh, Al. He was, he was first today. And... Uh, yeah, that's it so far. Uh, Abdul, got Abdul in the house. Right, yeah, uh, Abdul. Uh, he, he uh, I think, had some company coming, so he's going to catch up on uh, on the replay. But uh, he's always uh, he's always checking in. Um, so it's always uh, uh, it's always uh, we always appreciate uh, you uh, you watching uh, Abdul and everybody. So, um, uh, Dodger, hello, how's it going? Um, so you want to start off, uh, with some news, Thomas? Yeah, it's been a bit, I've, I've had a bit of a break from watches, to be honest with you. We've, we've had a bit of nice weather here in England and, uh, mm -hmm. been enjoying, been enjoying that. And we've got the Euro 2021 football on at the moment. So that's another distraction. I've, uh, had that. Mm -hmm. But so, but I got, got a bit, a little bit of watch news that I cobbled together. We've got the... First release was the Black Bay 58 Bronze, which I'm sure many of us are, are aware of. It's a 39mm case with the 11.9 thick uh, bronze watch with a bronze bracelet. And it's something that um, you'd have done before, a bronze watch. We've seen them do it before. This one... Um, the normal Black Bay 58 movement is the MT5402 with 70 hour power reserve, a non-magnetic non silicon hair spring and a free-sprung free adjustable mass balance wheel, which is cost 35. And um, the, the original um, 43 millimeter bronze Black Bay used the MT5601 variant of this movement used in the Chanel J12, again featuring a silicon hair spring, variable inertia balance and 70 hour power reserve, which was cost 35. This new um, bronze 58 now comes in a bronze rivet bracelet, which uh, debuts on a new micro extension clasp called the T-Fit, that is supposed to bring um, wearability to a new level. The uh, dial comes in the same uh, well, I'd call it a bit of a tropical brown colour tone. Mm -hmm. The original Black Bay Bronze did it with its Explorer style dial, featuring uh, applied quarter Arabic numerals, paying homage to vintage Submariners. And the the new clasp allows for the extension of up to 8 millimeters in 5 increments, a bit like a glide lock. Mm -hmm. And the fact, the fact that this watch is a boutique only piece demonstrates an element of the brand trying to boost their brand equity and help elevate you to, to a higher marketplace really um they have been growing their number of boutiques to help create more immersive experience they say as well as boosting their presence in busy shopping areas so uh, we'll see if uh, they do elevate themselves to a, a new level i mean what what do you think do you think tudor taking themselves up up a bit. You sure? Uh, I think that uh, I mean lately Tudor's been hitting out of the, out of the park um, and firing on all cylinders um, up until this point. Um, 
you know, it's def they're definitely taking a risk with, with this watch, you know, having an all bronze bracelet. Um, I love the fact that they have um, with this bracelet, um, you know, uh, they built in some adjustability, um, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, you said it was called the T link, I think. Uh, so you can uh, adjust it up yeah. to eight millimeters, which is something, you know, very, very, um, that's a cool idea. Um, you know, the, 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 the 43 bronzo ha ha has always been a, a good seller for them. So coming in uh, with a 39 uh, version, um, It'll be interesting to see. I mean, they kept it looking similar, uh, but changed it around just enough. Um, uh, the only thing that concerns me is the, is the boutique only. Uh, yeah, trying to like, sort of pump themselves up a bit. Right. You know, as the rancher was saying the other night, um, you know, there are no Tudor boutiques in the United States. So, um, right. and I think there's one in Canada. Um, right. So, you know, they're going to be limited. I mean, on how they're going to market these and how they're going to sell them. It, 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 I, I think maybe they have backed themselves into a corner. Um, but, you know, who knows? Uh, I'm sure they, they know more than, than, than you and I. Um, but it's definitely an interesting watch, um, you know, following on the heels of that all ceramic, um, uh, black ceramic okay. watch that, uh, yeah. that, that to me out Omega, o Omega, um, having it met, uh, met the certification, met, a, yeah. met a certified and being half the price of the, uh, of the Omega all, all black ceramic, yeah. uh, and it'll be interesting to see, um, it, I was yeah. I was much I was much more fan of the forty three millimeters mm -hmm. brown dial to be honest with you I re I loved the brown dial bronze mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like the blue when they went to the Boucher blue version mm -hmm. and the slate grey version so much well what about yourself Bruno did you are you a fan of these bronze watches I am not a fan of bronze watches I mean some people do like them. Um, it's not so I like the look of it, but it's not something that I would wear. Um, I do have a Tudor and, uh, you know, the standard uh, stainless and I love that watch. Uh, you know, even though it's slab sided and overly big, I have the 41 millimeter heritage and I love that watch, but I'm just not a fan of bronze. i one thing that struck me with this watch is I haven't seen many watches that have that are all bronze. I mean, you don't see any watches with a bronze bracelet, and that's yeah. uh, that was different. Yeah, and, yeah, that, and they'll the, they'll probably sell every one of these. So the, you know, that, whether that's or not I like key. them is irrelevant. Yeah. Well, no, it, it, it's totally relevant because it's uh, you, you know are that, the, the, you are the marketplace, right, 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 right. and uh, you know it, it's a bold move putting this on a on a bronze bracelet. It, it's different. Um, uh, you know, is this going to patina the way bronze usually patina? Uh, is it? Did they mix this with some other metal like they've done with the uh, with the the nine the, the Black Bay nine two five? You know, and they they to keep it from tarnishing or keep it from patinaing so much. It, it'll be interesting to see. And what yeah. will also be interesting is if it's going to patina the same way between the bracelet and the case. Yeah, like mm -hmm. Fulton Colossus brings up, is, is, is guessing the bracelet requires a permanent coating lest it end up uh, with corrosion. Yeah, because okay. the back of the watch obviously is stainless, isn't it? I mean, the, the, yeah. the, the back plate. And uh, the bracelet is not. I mean, the bracelet all around is, is bronze. Right. They put a new movement in this watch from the normal uh, Black Bay 58. They... They put a, an MT5400. I don't know why whether it was necessary for that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's because it's a no-date watch. Yep. I just want to welcome in the rancher. Welcome, rancher. Hi. Hey, hello, how are you hiding? Oh, hanging in there, guys. So I'm, I might have to. I might have to get up. Sorry, jump off. But we'll hopefully not. The 
so yeah, the Black Bay 50 and bronze, right? Yep. 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 Yeah. Okay. You know my big issue with it, right? Right. We, we we just we just brought it up a couple minutes ago that uh, the fact that it's boutique only and there's and I and I I mentioned that you know you had brought up that you know there are no boutiques in the United States and why one in Tudor, Canada. Tudor, why do you hate America? <laughs> <laughs> um. So and. Uh, we got uh, Bruno uh, B Dev with us, uh, Rancher. So. Hey, Rancher. How are hey, you? How's it going? Good, good. I mean, there's so much about that. I mean, you know, just it's just so freaking out there. I almost think you'd have to. I, I think you just have to, if it's, you'd have to pull the trigger if it was available. Yeah. Just to try it, just to, just to check the box. <laughs> especially, especially with that, um, with that bronze bracelet. Yeah. And at the price. Yeah. I'm not a fan of it on the bronze bracelet, to be honest no? with you. I say. No. I, I, I th it looks... I mean, I think our Auris have done watches similar, haven't they? And they, They've not taken my fancy. And uh, I, I think with their cotton candy watches they brought out, they had a sort of similar oh, gold, yeah, gold, gold, gold or bronze toned bracelet, but Never taken my fancy, but the bronze on the 43 millimeter bronze on the leather strap, love it, love it. Uh, you know, they're Rolex's little brother, but they're not exactly Rolex yet. They're acting like they are. They're yeah, trying, maybe they're maybe they're getting together, a little bit yeah. too big, too big for their bridges. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it's it's a bold move. So, um, and if you. My question is, if you take it off the, the bronze bracelet and you put it on the, the fabric strap, which looks fantastic as well, is the, the watch head and the bronze bracelet going to patina differently? That, that, that's a question I'd like to, to find out. Um, you know, bronze has never really struck my fancy, but, um, you know, I... I it, it's definitely different, and it's definitely cool. Um, I'd love to, you know, I've I've seen uh, the regular uh, forty three uh, black bay bronze um, on fabric straps before, but I'm curious to see um, what this would look like. Um, unfortunately, well, and now, and now I guess we, we have won't. The black bay fifty eight Olympics because they now issue them in gold, silver, and bronze. There you go. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the Black Bay Bronze, and uh, we'll we'll quickly move on to the next watch, which was the Frank Muller Scafander Tono Divers Watch. And easy for you to say, yeah. <laughs> introduced in 2018, but postponed until more recently. The Scafander gets its name from Scaphander, which is an old term used for a diving suit. Since 2018, the scaphander has been facelifted and just reaches our stores. And uh, looking at the watch instantly reminds us of Frank Muller's current style and that of Richard Meal. Uh, the tonneau case, despite being a style invented by Cartier in 1906, became uh, Muller's, Frank Muller's signature design during the 90s uh, with the Sintra Curve X model. And was a very popular design at the time and became recognized and associated with the co with the company ever since. Available in either steel or titanium, the scaphander has an open work style, and this may hinder legibility, but is a very modern style for some sport watches. With its case and shape and in a rotating bezel, though, this sport watch does, does have something about it, and priced at around 15,000 uh, Swiss francs, Mm -hmm. uh, is venturing into the Hubla Big Bang marketplace for people who like something quirky, I, I reckon. Um, powered by the FM 2800SK movement, which is basically an ETA 2892, which is quite reliable and easy to service. Right. Um, the main feature of the watch, though, comes from how Frank Muller matched a rotating bezel with a tonneau case. Mm. This rather complex elapsed time 
diving bezel, which is rotated with a pair of pushers on the, si on the left-hand side of the case. The pusher at 8 o'clock advances the bezel one-minute increments, mm -hmm. whilst the pusher at 10 o'clock does the same in five-minute increments. And in the middle of the pusher is, is the lock button that uh, disengages the adjustment mechanism, preventing unintentional movement to the bezel. The main question is, uh, is anyone really going to dive with this watch? And, uh, right. and that's you know, enough. back in the day, Frank Mueller was. Uh, oh, hot, hot, quite, hot! In, exactly. Back in the nineties, yeah. Exactly. I mean, they were the they were one of the main watches that people were wearing. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but uh, is this going to uh, to catch on again? I mean, it, it's different. Um, uh, Fourteen thousand Swiss francs. So you're talking over fifteen grand. Um, and, and as you were saying, Tom's is someone really going to die with it? I mean, it's cool that it's a to, to no case. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, it's titanium version. So the the yellow and the uh, green. The green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's certainly. Well, if you ask a marine what army stands for, they'll tell you. It stands for aren't really Marines yet. <laughs> what do you reckon? I kind of feel, about the, kind of feel the same way about the watch. I kind of, I kind of want to, I kind of want to like it, but at some point, it's it's even worse than getting a Glashut original Pinot Reserve instead of a Lange One. Mm -hmm. What do you reckon, Bruno? Have you, have you got any? Sorry, Rancho. I, I, I've been, I interrupted your flow. Well, obviously, this is a watch I will never own. Um, you know, as far as diving with it, I don't know how you're going to turn that bezel. Also, it's only 100 meters water resistant. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. It's an acquired taste. You know, people. some people are going to buy it, but it's not uh, something that I would uh, ever see in the, in the future for me. That's for sure. Oh, that's fair enough. Um, let me just uh, interrupt here and uh, welcome some people that uh, that have uh, joined us. ID guy, uh, welcome, my friend. Hi, ID um, guy. Donald, uh, For Foreman Colossus, uh, Justin Hi. R, Philip Savage, yeah, Mr. GMT, Orange Hand. Always good to see you, my friend. Hi, Orange Hand. Good Thank to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so... Uh, uh, an interesting watch, Thomas, uh, no doubt. Um, does this put uh, Frank Mueller back on the map? Hmm, interesting question. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like having a budget Jabba Richard Neal, isn't he? And uh, he's sort also, kind of. also going for that, like that Hublot sort of marketplace. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, there'll, there'll be people out there who, who who can afford them, who can afford to buy them, to put in their collections. I would imagine, um, but or maybe want them as a fashion piece. But um, I I don't know. Um, it's a very specific niche in the market. They're yeah. too rich to afford a, to afford a Casio. They're too poor to afford a Richard Mille. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I I I I, I just don't know. Um, and yeah, you would like think that it, 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 that I'm sorry, Thomas, but um, if they're really going for a diver, you would think it would be more than you know 100 meters, but. Sure, absolutely. With all this technology in the bezel action. Right. I like Megan Megan says and J C B it's a trendy fun watch for those who perhaps like the uh Richard Mill look. But fifteen thousand uh dollars nearly it's uh it's a quite expensive yep. uh, uh welcome to uh Maison One and Shot in the Dark and uh Design Atelier, Jason uh Thanks for joining us, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, Daniel Katz. Daniel. 
So, done this one. Um, we'll quickly move on to the last bit of news I have. Uh, sure. Which the Anton Suhornov racer jumping our GMT. And uh, Anton Suhonov is best known for impressive desk clocks, the most recent of which features a triple axis torbion within a metallic flower. He's just unveiled his first wristwatch. This is inspired by automotive gauges called the Racer Jumping Hour GMT. It's an inventive take on the uh, dual time zone wristwatch and boosts both a double retrograde display along with the jumping hour. Once having worked on in uh, Constantin Shaken's workshop, the novel design mm -hmm. of this watch is understandable. And uh, this has also an automotive design really designed really well with several elements, including the uh, little canopies over each retrograde display. Uh, the race is more complex than it looks, as the time display module has uh, many parts as, as, as an entire chronograph movement. Although the base movement is an off wheels workhorse 2824. The two retrograde dials at 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock show the 12 hour and 60 minute displays, and the seconds lie within a narrow horizontal window which has a 20 second scale, which of course repeats three times a minute. Uh, above the seconds track is a second time zone, which comes in the form of a jumping hours on a 20, 24 hour scale. And at six o'clock, within the circular, ap circular aperture, there's a date readout. The dial comprises of 27 parts and has a central section in ruthenium plated brass and uh, finished with an arching hobnail gear tray that varies in scale from top to the bottom. Each of the twin subdials for the retrograde displays are anodized titanium. And the case is uh, 39 millimeters by... 20 by 12.5 thick, sorry, uh, has a rulo polygon or rounded square shape. And Anton Tuhonov says uh, the shape hints at the aerodynamics and streamlined lines found in high speed cars. So he's good, definitely going for an automotive design with this watch. Absolutely, I, I quite like it. I quite, I quite like yeah. the uh, retrograde. Uh, readouts on the on the either left left and right. Yeah, I mean it, it. It's definitely you know motorsports and 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 car uh, you know themed. I'm usually not a big retrograde fan, but you know uh, it definitely looks like a, you know a speedometer and a and and a you know rev counter on a uh, on a car. So speedometer. Tachometer, thank you. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I like it. Dodge yeah. was asking what the cost is, and it's uh, fourteen thousand six hundred dollars, Dodger. So it's it's yeah, it's quite a lot. So it's got a ETA uh, twenty eight twenty four dash two combined uh, with with another module. With so, a module, uh, yeah. yeah. The, it's limited to 20 pieces, so they're, they're <laughs> available direct from Anton Sohanov. What do you reckon to this, Bruno? You're an automotive guy. You're, you're into your car. I, I think it's a great-looking watch. I, when it first came up on the screen, I said, this is beautiful. I love it. You know, Obviously, I won't own it, but it's just a great watch. I mean, I, you, know, you don't see too many watches that look like this, especially with the, uh, with, with the uh, with car inspiration there. Sure, uh, it's great. Yeah, there's a few manufacturers now, a few micro brands doing uh, automotive sort of styled uh, pans, pan mm -hmm. dials. Um, yeah, there's a few few out there. Uh, this this is this is really nice, but quite expensive. But uh, only twenty made. But um, yeah, really nice, nice looking, nice looking dial. What do you think, Rancher? Divided. How how much is what's what's the MSRP on it? It's fourteen six hundred. So you're talking like sixteen hundred dollars, sixteen thousand, give or take. Sixteen and change US. Well, at least no one's gonna confuse it for a discount reshared mill or think it's a happy mill toy. True. Um 
I just think it's for twenty eight ninety ninety two. I like it. I just mm-hmm. don't know if I. How much? What fourteen thousand dollars? Yeah, yeah that's that, that's euros. Oh, it's even worse. Euros, I don't know if I eighteen thousand dollars worth of like it. Yeah, I, I I can see that. I can definitely see that, but but definitely different and yeah. uh, and um, you know just. Like I said, I'm not a big, huge fan uh, of of retrograde, but uh, but this is kind of cool, and uh, you know, very uh, very different. Again, uh, you're right. Um, I don't know if it's worth the money, but uh, no, it's different. It's different. Well, I am a fan of retrograde, but I still agree with you. Yeah. I uh, want to welcome in Mark P. Uh, good to see you, my friend. Uh, thank you for joining Hi, us. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, a lot, lot, lot of our friends are here. It's, it's always, it's always good to see, uh, to see everybody, and we, and we thank you all for for joining in. Um, I brought one to the table just because, as everybody knows, I'm a, I'm a big uh, Breguet Type Twenty fan. Oh yeah, there's a Breguet release, wasn't there? So there was a Breguet release. Um mm. and where am I? There we go. Okay. So it's a type twenty one, uh the thirty eight fifteen in titanium. Um so it's a really, really good looking watch. Um in a metal that uh, you know, I I really would love to get a titanium watch at some point. Um, yeah. I've always been in, intrigued by the by the metal because it's so lightweight. Um, and um, the Type Twenty One is a little bit bigger than the Type Twenty. Uh, this is forty two millimeters, um, but it's still it it's still you know, has the classic Breguet Type 20 look. Um, and I just thought this was really, really an interesting piece. I'm not I'm not a fan of the, uh, you know, the, the transatlantic version with the with the date on on the bottom. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just it's a beautiful watch. And I, I, I at some point I, I, I really want to add one a Type 20 uh, to my collection. Uh, but this just this, this struck me as a really good looking chronograph, and you know it's just under fifteen grand. So and, oh, of course, yeah, and limited to two hundred and fifty pieces. Oh, of, yeah. of, of yeah. course, yeah. <laughs> you can't say um, no to Breguet, though, can you? No. If you no. just go back up to that picture, the first picture, the first the one, first, sure. Yeah, I, I, that no, the one you were there. Sorry, the second picture. Uh, come on now, my mouse is not not that one. Yeah, that uh, that one. Now four, was, the number four has been bugging me mm-hmm. because the, it's not lined up properly. Right. It's, it's the back, the but the top of it, the top half and the bottom half don't seem to line up on the four. Mm. It's just well, a as we know, it's not the cash grab, but it's kind of a lazy cash grab. Mm-hmm. It's a so, little, the fact that it even has a four on there, I'm surprised about. Just a little niggly thing that got me about it. That. What are you? Uh, are you uh, a chronograph guy, um, Bruno? Or are you you, uh, you uh, a Breguet guy? Um, I like chronographs. Um, I've had you know I have some now, and I've had them in the past. Um, Breguet, I, they're great watches. Uh, the odds are I'm probably not going to own one. But uh, it's not that, you know, I I wouldn't pursue one. It's just that my tastes are a little bit on the lesser expensive side uh, for practical reasons. But um, I do like this watch. I'm not a fan of the red-orange. You know, yeah. if, it, if mm-hmm. it was your basic white, you know, which is, you know, kind of blah, but, you know, it would be a killer. But... Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah. And the green, forget it. I just don't like it at all. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan you know, of the green can't, either. How, how could you not like a Breguet watch? You know, whatever it is. Uh, but you know, like everybody, like everybody has their tastes. And if if it had white, you know, numerics, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I would like it more. And uh, I, but I just wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be on a path to buy one because it just doesn't fit my lifestyle. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Just I say welcome to Hans Knees and Toes. Who hey, Hansy, what's up, man? Geezer, what's going on? All arriving. All right. So, uh, any other thoughts on the Breguet? I just love to. I can't I, wait. I would if somebody gave me. If somebody gave me one, I w wouldn't say no. That's let's yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> I'd love to get a Breguet at some point, but uh, as as Bruno says, it's the money, isn't it? It's uh... sure. I mean, it always comes down to that. All right, so we'll say goodbye to the Burgay and um, welcome Bruno or B Dev, as we all know him. Right, right, that, right. Uh, yeah, B Dev, we, you're you well, you well, uh, well, well known amongst the streams, and uh, we know you all from the uh, really? all the chat streams and the yeah, sure, the watch channels. Well, I'm really happy to be here. You know. Um, uh, you know, for for everybody who's watching, you know, my collection is uh, just a you know a basic regular guy collection. There's not you know anything really crazy in it, and uh, but there's some nice stories to go with the watches. So we should have a good yeah. time. Yeah, That's we're gonna have a good time. Good, good stuff. Well, how did you get into watches, Bruno? How okay, did you, did how, you much get how much time do you have? All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you. Uh, you know, collecting, you know, currently, I really haven't been buying these kind of watches since since 2018. I really, you know, I've been collecting my whole life. Uh, when I was a kid, it was coins, comic books, uh, you know, at the time, you know, baseball cards. But that's not collecting. That's something that you just were a kid and you bought. Mm -hmm. um, then I collected firearms, knives. I did get into pocket watches for a while. Mm-hmm. And Thomas, cool. I did collect trumpets, so you know, you know that we yeah, played yeah. trumpet, and so did you. Yeah. And uh, believe it or not, I collected baseball gloves. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, I mean, I went up to uh, you know the uh, Hall of Fame and mm -hmm. you know, caught the bug, but I just got out of it because it was either feast or famine. It was either garbage, you know, for 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 pennies, or really good gloves for too much money. Mm -hmm. So it just, you know, fell out of favor with me. And then I, you know, I came into, uh, into watches. So like I said, I've been collect, I'm not really a collector. I was talking to you about this before. I buy what I like and I wear them. Um, you know, to me, a collector is somebody who's got a goal. They, uh, they say, okay, I'm going to collect these kind of watches or I'm going to be into chronos or I'm going to be into divers. And, mm -hmm. you know, then they try to, you know, build up a, a, a specific collection. Uh, a lot of the people who uh, who are into watches and are watching this, and you know, they they just buy watches they like. And really, if, when you see my collection, you'll understand that I, I don't collect anything specific. It's just um, what I like to wear. I try to not have the same kind of watch more than twice. Mm -hmm. And and when we get through them, you'll understand. Yeah, Bruno, we were talking about that before, and I, I think a collection or a collector is not necessarily someone with a goal, but someone who's on a journey. Yeah, someone who, someone you can who, say that, yeah. And um, everybody's journey is different. Your journey is different from mine, is different from Thomas's, is different from absolutely. Clyde's, and that that's right. the beauty of this hobby is that everybody, you know, Sometimes we we end up in the same place, but how we get there is just is completely right. unique right. to everybody. Right. right. If you've got a goal, it, it it comes to an end, doesn't it? Really, the collecting mm -hmm. and and you move on to something else. Right. So, right. Which I suppose you have done in, with your other collections of baseball cards and gloves and other things you've been interested in. But was yeah, that, what? It, it's it's a journey. It's I think it's a. It's something well with all collections. It's a journey, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just amassing things and 
finding sorting out what you like and don't like and having ideas about just what whatever can, well it, it can come from nowhere it, you can just see something and it catches your eye and you you're immediately hooked on that thing Ex exactly and the, the, the i'm a lot like you bruno i i don't have collect stuff just to to sit in you know in a watch box uh, yeah I, I get watches because i want to wear them um and i enjoy wearing them um and you know there are some that i enjoy and, and wear more than others but um that's you know I, I, I everything that i have um i wear and if something um that i see i don't wear as much anymore then you know, maybe that's time for it to move on to somebody else yeah that's so. what happens with me exactly matter of fact three of the watches that you're going to show are up for sale so you know there you go yeah you know yeah. things change from week to week you never know what's going to happen yeah well let, let's kick off with some of your watches sure. sure all right and we'll start with number one ah everybody should have one seiko and that's mine mm -hmm. and believe it or not yeah I, that's that's just your basic turtle um i've had some seikos in the past i had a, a baby turtle or and it was just too small at 38 this one is 45 and it's just too big uh, mm -hmm. for me i mean it's not a big watch but i just don't like wearing something more than 42 and I have a seven inch wrist, so it's not as if I can't pull it off. Obviously, you could, if you look at the picture, it fits. Mm -hmm. And this one is on its way out. So somebody will be happy when they buy it because I just don't wear it. You know, I mean, I have so many other watches that I wear on a daily basis mm -hmm. that, you know, it just sits because if I'm not going to wear it, mm -hmm. it's got to go. That's the way. Gotcha. I, that's the way. I did it. Okay. Hey, but, did you, but it's a good watch. Did you, did you ever have a, uh, um, an SKX? No, no. You didn't. Okay. Just, I'm not into that shaking that watch. <laughs> no. The Seiko no. shuffle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, no. I shouldn't say that because it wasn't an SKS, but I did have a Seiko from the 80s or the 90s that had a, mm -hmm. a, a, a set. What is it? Seven S twenty six. Yep. And uh, and yeah, it, you you had to shake it and everything like that. And uh, it, I it didn't keep it too long. It wasn't that accurate. It was used obviously, and I sold it off. But I did have it. I did have a few. I, I had other Seikos that I can't even remember. I think I had a chronograph Seiko and mm -hmm. others. And I just, you know, I might have had four or five over the years. Gotcha. gotcha. But this is the only one I have left. And, I, and actually, everything lines up on this watch. There you uh, go. Which I'm is always contemplating if it's a fake. I don't know. <laughs> it's, but, which is always a shock when it comes to <laughs> uh, the Seiko having everything yeah, lined up. It, you know, it's a great watch. If I don't sell it, fine. I'll I'll keep it and I'll wear there it. There you go. You know, I don't care. But uh, uh, but it is a good it is a good watch for what it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Let me just welcome in uh, Dan Radke. Uh, good to see you Hi, and, uh, and Bobby you. Smith. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, yeah, I I I you know, I had a, a uh, an SKX a double oh nine, and I you know I experienced it. Um, I couldn't. I I soon got tired of the of having you know to shake the move you know n you know non hand winding and non hacking and you know I, I moved it on but I got to experience it and uh, and uh, you know it's it, it's it's a it's an iconic looking watch so um, and, and this one is, is is similar this is more. The size of my uh, my Seiko King Turtle, which is also a uh, a forty five millimeter, um, um, and it uh, even though it, it, it's a big watch, it, it, it sits well on my seven and a half inch wrist um, because yeah. the the lug to lug isn't that uh, that uh, no, it's small. I think not it's that 40, long. I think it's about forty seven. Yeah, but I, but the one thing that's that I don't like about this watch, well. It's not that I don't like it. It's just the um, it's hard to put certain straps on this watch because the the pins, uh, the, the 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 spring bars are very mm -hmm. thick. All right. So if you try to buy an aftermarket strap, let's say, or even a bracelet, 
you the pin won't work. And if you try to use narrower pins, mm -hmm. they they just fall through the hole. Um, so basically, I have it on a NATO right now mm -hmm. um, instead of the rubber because I hate that rubber strap. And it's just too long. And yeah. uh, so it's on a NATO, and once in a while, I'll take it out and wear it, and the NATO's fine. Yeah, the rubber uh, straps are a bit funny, aren't they? I've found as well those 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 ones with the crimps at the top and. Uh... Well, you know what it is? It's the length of the strap because they. Put, so if you wanted to wear it over, let's say a wetsuit, you can do either or. So they make it longer. Right. And it's just so much extra that comes out at the at the uh, around it, right. and yeah. it's not that comfortable. I uh, just want to welcome in um, Oil Money Watches and uh, uh, Sanjay, uh, Engineer Wannabe. Uh, welcome. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Yeah, welcome, Oil Money. Great to see you. All right. So, oh, we'll... Psycho Turtle SR SRP779, this one was. Yeah, uh, 45 millimeter. And we'll move on to the next one. Shuffle on to a, a Zen. 104. Yeah, just your basic 104. It It's a great watch. It really is. Um, you know, legibility is fantastic. The loom is great. Um, you wear this one a lot then, do you, Bruno? Actually, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I do wear it, but as you'll find out later when you see some other watches, this one I basically, if I can sell it, I'm looking to sell it. Um, listen, um, I'm not I'm not yeah. saying that. So you know, so uh, the people on the chat, well, oh, I want to buy you what? No, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just you know, um, it's it's something that I I have an Olek and Voss that I bought that I wear more. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's redundant to have both, you know. Uh, plus, I have, um, you know, as you'll see later, I have a hand heart. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, what am I wearing more? I'm, I'm, it'll always be hand heart. It'll always be the Olek. Right. So, right. what's, what is, why is the Zin just sitting in the box? So, that's, you know, and I, and I know that if I want one in the future, I could always get another. Right. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. They're perfectly available all, all over. Yeah. yeah, they're all over. You could always buy one if you want. Sure. Yeah. Um, nice. For, nice. For been saying that the, the syringe hands are, are well suited to, to today. <laughs> yes, they are. They are. <laughs> but I'll tell you that their, their loom is great. It's, it, it's, you can't go wrong with this watch. The countdown bezel, you know, some people like it, some people don't. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just, the, the only thing, you know, I, I didn't buy... The um, the Arabic one, because mm -hmm. you know when I looked I was going to ask it, you about that. Yeah, I, I mean, I bought the indices, but the Arabic with the numbers on, uh, you know, basically, with the numbers on the bezel and the numbers on the watch, it just seems so busy, you know. Because if you mm -hmm. if you think about it, all you got all these numbers here, and, and I just like the look of the indices when I was looking for this watch, you know. But uh, that's why I bought the Indusu model. It's a lovely photo as well. And, uh, I'm just it looking is. at the H-Link bracelet. I really like those bracelets. Yeah. They're, they're Actually, really comfortable. I bought this watch on, on the strap, and I bought the bracelet afterward. You know, I mm -hmm. bought it used online. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, and because I wanted it on the bracelet. And it, it really is a, a good bracelet. It's comfortable. It's a very comfortable bracelet. Yeah, really nice, those H-Link bracelets. I'm a big fan. Yeah, and this is another watch that a lot of collectors um, have either have presently in their collection or have experienced it and, and moved on. Um, you can't go wrong with the, with. I, I mean, it's outstanding legibility. Uh, you got a day and a date. Um and it's just uh, it's one that I I considered numerous times, um, and, but and just also, never never pulled the trigger. Not a lot of text on the dial, right? Just has right. the name and automatique. Yep, that's it. Well, made in Germany, 
But other than that, it's a great, you know, now that I'm saying all this, I think I won't sell it. I think I'll keep it. <laughs> Change your mind. Well, nobody's knocking the door down for it. So, you know, we'll just see what happens. Right. Contrast. Yes. There you go. Yes, exactly. that's the word. I, yep. Yeah. Yes, Rancher. And you're the one who came up with that word, and it's great. What do you think to these season one hundred four rancher? Nice watch. Uh, I don't, I don't I know. Guess we lost, I guess we lost. So we'll move on to number three. Yeah. What's number what? three? Let's see. Oh, it's another Zen. Another Zen. Yeah. Nice uh, one. More like uh, yeah. speedmaster sort of style uh, bezel mm -hmm. on this one. Yeah, this is the Zin 303, right? I believe this watch was made in 1998. I don't have a hard date number. You know, it's hard to date these things, but I think it's 1998. Mm -hmm. And one of the only Zin watches you're going to find with a tachometer bezel. They, they don't just don't make them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have a shot of the back of the watch, but on the back... Mm -hmm. They actually have tire ratings. I don't know why they did it, but they have the letter and they have the, how many miles an hour the tire would go. Really? Yeah, I just don't get it. But yeah. it was neat. And what I did with this watch when I bought it, uh, you know, the, the loom was gone. You know, it's been over 22, 23 years. Mm -hmm. So I sent it to RGM and had him put a new dial and new hands on it. Because if you look at it, they look brand new. Mm -hmm. So he ordered them from uh, Zinn, and he and he did the work for me, uh, because you know the patina is nice, but it's, it's a little overrated. You know, on a mm -hmm. Rolex, yeah, you want to save it. You want, you know, it's gonna you're gonna sell it down the line. You don't want to put anything new on it, but nobody cares about a Zinn. So you know, I had it done up so it looks great, and it it is a nice watch. It's, I think it's forty one millimeters. Yeah, forty one mil and uh, it's got a value seventy seven yeah. fifty. So yeah, it's you've a thick got watch. A rock, a rock solid movement. Yeah, it's a yeah. thick watch. It's uh, fifteen millimeters. Um, but it's it's a nice watch. It really is. And it's you don't see too many around like this. No, it's definitely a good racing uh, inspired chronograph, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. It's again, and it's got the same bracelet as the uh yeah. Yeah, no, the one like bracelet, just like the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lovely. Really right. nice. Oh, we've gone from Psycho to two Sims. And Rom go to a tag. Ah, a tag. So, tag yeah. one, the F1, 41 yeah. meter. It's a quartz. A quartz. Right. And I love this watch. I got it. I'll tell you a story about this watch. Sure. So I see it on eBay. And, you know, the seller's a nice guy. You know, I, I says, okay, I'll buy it. I buy the watch. I get the watch. I open up the box. Of course, it came with the box and papers and everything. There's no watch in the box. Oh, are you kidding? So I'm laughing. I says, you got it. I know what happened. The guy had the box. Mm -hmm. He never opened it. He put it in the box and he mailed it. So <laughs> I get, so I contact the guy and I says, uh, you know, oh. not for nothing, but uh, there's no watch in the box. And mm -hmm. he was, what? Oh. So luckily he weighed, you know, the weight of the box, the weight of the whole shipment was on the uh, label. Mm -hmm. So obviously if you added a watch to it, it would weigh more. Right. So he knew he, you know, so, Basically, he gave me my money back. I kept every, I kept all the box and everything. Then he found the watch, mm -hmm. and we wind up. He sold it to me. You know, since I had my money back, he sold it to me through PayPal, and he shipped the watch. So then we had a good thing. I had a an honest seller because he could have mm -hmm. said, well, "What are you talking about? That was in the box," and I could have been out the money. So right. once you get lucky, sometimes, then. Yeah. I sell this watch, right? Mm -hmm. I sold it on, I think, WS, WS, Watch You Seek or something like that. Okay. And, uh, you know, it was gone for about uh, six, eight months. Then I see it's up for sale again. And he's, he's you know, he's selling the watch. Mm -hmm. I bought it back. 
for, for the same money that you know he's I sold it to him for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just you know it's a quartz that's. All right, everybody, you know, everybody poo poos quartz watches and everything, but it hits the indices every time. It's got mm-hmm. great loom. It's got great presence on the wrist. You know, a lot of people see these watches and they don't, they think they're just cheap tags, garbage watches. Mm-hmm. If you put it on wrist, you it looks a lot more expensive than what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about retail. I'd never buy one retail. Uh, but it's a great watch. You know, you just grab and go. You throw it on the wrist. It's always good. The time is always right. And mm-hmm. it's a good looking watch. I do yeah. like it. Yeah. I remember in the 90s and the 80s, they, the, I think it was a 2000. Yeah. I used to have those. It was a great quartz watch. And I used to love that watch. It well, was a great, great looking watch. And that, that was a quartz as well. But uh, again, uh, like you say, it looked like a it looked like a more expensive watch. Yeah, it, well, it uh, you know when it's on wrist, looking at it in the pictures, you really can't appreciate it. Um, I, you know, when I first started collecting in 2018, I bought a lot of older tag watches. I don't know why I got into tag. I can't remember why, mm-hmm. but I must have had 17 of them. Um, like you know, two thousand. Well, there's there's a lot of reasons. It could be forceps of birth. It could be childhood <laughs> trauma. Yeah, right. Uh, I knew I get a lot of pharmaceutical use. You know, because of tag. But I'll be I'll be asked, you know to learn about watches and it, it was great because they weren't that expensive. So I I had two thousand series, four thousand series. I had uh, six thousand series. I had. Um, uh, I, then I then what I did was I sold off a lot of those tags. I bought a Monza. I bought a Panamericana. Mm-hmm. I bought a Car- three-hand Carrera that was an oh, auto. Oh, wow. I had a Monza that was an auto. That was good. It was a small seconds. Oh, I, I, got, a, I, I got a Monza, and I gave yeah. it to my dad. Well, not a chronograph, but just a small seconds one. Good. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, I had a, had a cushion case. It was a good watch. Yeah. And uh, had an Indy 500 uh, chronograph, which was a nice watch. And I had an F1 Golf Edition, you know, with the livery, Golf livery. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. yep. Yeah. And that was, uh, you know, it was just like the, the one that's on screen now, only it had the Golf livery. Um, and they were great watches to, to buy and learn. And he learned about you know, the history of the of TAG and all that. And then I, you know, I fell out of favor with them and I sold them off to buy other watches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I only have two TAGs left. I have this and I have a Monaco, which should be coming up soon. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah, so this is a great, you know, grab and go watch. Uh, I wouldn't call it a beater watch. Uh, I have a picture of a beater watch later, and uh, but this one is it's just a good watch. I it's a, it's an honest good watch. Yeah, yeah, great starter, great starter piece. Yeah, and and like you said, for a grab and go. Yeah. Um, and I love um. The steel bezel. Uh, yeah, that that's what does it for me. I you're right because they do have other variations of the swatch that I just don't like, but that steel bezel with the black dial, mm-hmm. and and the and the actual tag uh, logo in green and red instead of the yep. monochrome look. Yeah, uh, that's what does it. It's a nice touch. A yeah. nice touch. Oh, this is a good point. People people go into tag hire because their outfits were everywhere. Yeah. So. Oh, and well, I- all over Formula One and mm-hmm. yeah, that's that. That's another thing, you know, I, about f- why they call this watch a Formula One when it's a actually a diver. You know, I just don't get it. Yeah. You know, I don't, last I seen Formula One cars don't race on the water. <laughs> but, exactly. It, you know, eh, I guess it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I just want to um, say uh, uh, thank you for for popping in, uh, Sanjay. Uh, we appreciate it, Engineer Wannabe. Always Thanks. good to see you, and yeah. uh, and uh, a big hello to our uh, our friend uh, Flip and Zippo. What's up, uh, pal? Always, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. All right, so we'll move on from to, the tag. from the tag to the Tudor Tudor Bay. Heritage Bay. Black Bay Forty One. Yes, yeah. Dive Stream off talking about Black Bays, but this one's not bronze. It's uh, one of the no. originals. Yeah, this picture doesn't do it justice, obviously, but uh, it's a bad picture. But it, I love this watch. It's a great watch. 
Um, you know, some people find it oversized, you know, the, uh, it's 41 millimeters, but it's thick, you know, it's slab sided. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about it. I, you know, the, the Black Bay 58, I've never actually wore one. I've never actually seen one in the, in the metal, mm -hmm. but I know it would be a little bit too small for what I would like. I don't like divers that are 39 or less because there's so much bezel that you sacrifice the size of the dial, like, mm -hmm. like opposed to a field watch at the same size. Um, and I like the divers a little bit bigger. Like for, like this is 41. I think it's perfect. I wish it was a little thinner, but it is what it is. Um, it, it's a great, when you put it on wrist, it just feels good. It, it's a good watch. I like it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's a stalwart watch, and, and it's a favorite of many people. I mean, the original Black Bay 41, I mean, it's, it's it, it's a it's a size that's that's goes in between the larger watches, the sort of forty four watches, and that forty millimeter watch right. or forty nine watch, and it's it, it it's a middle ground, isn't it? I think, and it it's it's a lovely sized watch, not yeah. for every, not for everyone, obviously, because the fifty eight is very popular, mm -hmm. but I think I think I I I can carry off a forty one millimeter Black Bay. For quite, sure. Quite happily. For, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Beautiful watch. Lovely. It really yeah. it, it really is. Um it, it it does everything really well. Um uh I I just uh it's a it's a great everyday do everything kind of uh diver. And uh you know what I I'm like you, Bruno. It, the the thickness doesn't really bother me um it, it's it sits on the on the wrist well and uh, uh it, it's it's just it, it, it's 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 another well it's the foundation of what modern day tutor is so uh it's a fantastic watch yeah sorry i was across the room where i heard you say the thickness doesn't bother you <laughs> <laughs> when i'm going yeah. to time So, but uh, yeah, uh, just 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 a fantastic watch. So we'll move on to the next one. Let's see what that is. Oh, Venga Quartz. Venga. Yeah, thirty-eight millimeter. This one, so it's like yeah. in the uh, Black Bay. Uh -huh. I bought the. I, I had a Wenger, a Venga. Let's let's call it what it is. Right. Uh, Oop. Years Sorry. ago, and I wore it, you know, all the time, and then I got rid of it. And then this one came up for sale. I forgot, it, probably on eBay. And I just looked at it and I said, you know, this is a neat looking watch. Um, I think it was like fifty bucks, or you know, it wasn't a lot of money. But what's good about it is it's two hundred meters water resistance, and it has a screw down crown. And it's just a solid watch, and like, and the, and I'm a, I'm a stickler for it has to hit the indices, you know. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I just won't look at the watch, and it does. And I do, I don't wear it much because it is small. It's 38 millimeters diver, like the, the, the dial is small. But once in a while, I'll toss it on, um, and it's just a great, great little watch uh, for what it is, you know, for an inexpensive watch. Um, yeah, and a lot of people years ago, you know, these were pretty big, you know, as far as uh, wearing yeah. these kind of watches. Yeah, because yeah. it was a decent size years ago. I don't know how old this watch is, but it has to be twenty years old, maybe mm -hmm. at least. You know, yeah. Well, it's a two hundred meter diver, so it's uh, fairly capable, and uh, yeah, I mean, quite, I'm sure many people had these. Quite a good startup watch, the quartz yeah. again, and. Uh, yeah, do the job. All right, so we'll move on from this one. So this is your Ole Kunwas. Yeah. Um, yeah. P one hundred and one. Yeah, the P one hundred and one. When I saw this watch, I said, "I have to, I have to own this watch." It took me a year to get it. 
Mm-hmm. So this, I this kept putting it off. This replaced your, or you felt like replacing your Zin 303 with this song? Uh, no, the uh, the 104. Um, oh, the Zin yeah, 104. It is obviously different uh, than the than the 104, but it's it's a little bit smaller, um, and it just. I, I don't know what it was for this watch that, that, that I gravitated to this watch. Um, you know, in pictures, it looked great. I do like it. Um, mm-hmm. I wear it a lot. It's, but it, but in, you know, in the metal, when you have it on it, the legibility is good when you're in good light. Um, because of the dial and the, and the indices not being white, it's hard to tell on this photo, but they're more of a yellow color. Mm-hmm. The, it, the legibility suffers. Let's call it contrast. Um, it, it, but it, it, it's a it's, it's a nice watch. I like it. I like the fact that it has a six o'clock date, um, and it's just different. It's very. I different. love it, Bruno. I really yeah. like it. I love that point of seconds hand. I yeah. love that. That's it's unique. Cool. Yeah, I love the different colored hour hand from the minute hand. I look. I just love that, uh, the, you know, the sort of slate gray and sort of brownish dial. Uh, I, I love the bracelet. The bracelet looks nice. Is it like a bead of no, rice? It is, it is. It is a. It is a very nice bracelet. Very. Nice. Yeah. yeah. The the beads of rice. You, you got. You got to love that. Um, the whole watch. The whole package looks great. I would have swapped it for the uh, Zin One Hundred Four. Definitely. Yeah, mm. and you know, and the. It's not really an expensive watch, you know, compared to other watches like it. Um, and uh, it just does. I like the 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 the, um, the bezel also being a you know one to twelve, mm-hmm. more practical. You know, I could just change time zone if I want. You just turn it and you and you got uh, you got a GMT there. Um, it is a good watch, it really is. Yeah, really nice looking piece. They could yeah. make a better clasp. Because it's just a basic, um, you know, stamp. Right. Play. You can't obviously you can't see it. I don't have a picture of the class, but if you went on the website, and it's mm-hmm. just a, you know, it it does its job, but for a watch that's around twelve hundred dollars, they could do better um, on the class. But you know, you put it you put it on, you put the class. You don't see the class a lot. It's not really that big a deal. But you know, you just want to get the most for your money. Nice. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on. Casio Duro. Casio yeah, not, Duro. Not much to say about this, but I don't even know why I sent you well, the picture. But. It's, in, it's in the box, you know, it's one of your watches. It's in the collection. Yeah. Part you of the gym. It's it's just it's it was an impulse buy. I, I don't know. I I was I went on Amazon and I, I just dropped the money down for it. You know why? I heard that the new ones are not going to have the Marlin on it anymore. Correct. Or whatever that Correct. is. So I says, you know, I like that. Even though I don't own the watch, it looks great. So let me buy one. <laughs> and I like blue. And, you know, it's a great watch to grab and, and toss on the wrist. And um, and if you want to do something outside or you want to gonna be by water and, you know, it's great. And plus it's a 200-meter watch. So if you want to swim with it, you can. Obviously not with that strap. I, that That's gone. But uh, it it is what it is. It's just a Casio Duro. It's a yeah. quite 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 a big piece as well. It's forty four mil. It's, yeah, it is. They like, like the Seiko Turtle that you say you're getting rid of, which yeah. is five mil. Do you right. think they stay in the box long, or will you will you will you keep it because of that Marlin on the dial? I'll just keep it. I mean, for what I paid for. Yeah. It, you know, keep, it, who's you know, yeah, why would I sell it? I'll just keep it. Either that or I'll, sooner if somebody likes it, I'll give it to them. That's all. You know, Eat get somebody it. into watches. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, for for what you're going to pay for this, you you get a lot of bang per buck out of this watch. Uh, you can go anywhere, take it, uh, and do anything with it, and uh, you know, it's not going to owe you anything. So, um, uh, I think this. I've several times almost purchased a, a Duro. Um, uh, again, it, it's a bigger watch, um, that is, uh, 44 mil. So, you know, it's not for everybody. Uh, but, 
another great uh, grab and go piece for sure. Uh, I'll tell you, for for what you pay for this watch, it, it looks like a lot more. It I mean, does. When, when you get it and you hold it in your hand, you go, you know, how do they do it for this price? It's a nice watch, you know. Yeah. Yeah, good, good bargain, bargain watches don't always have to, I mean, nice watches don't always have to be expensive. I mean, you can it's get fun. a, you, exactly, you can get a fun watch. For it's a, so it's just a fun watch to have. And but I think the blue is nice. Yeah. And they're, they're fun to wear, like you say, Bruno. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on. A hand heart. This is something I really like, B Dev. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, this is, this is really, great. Work. Really nice watch. A hand heart chronograph. Tell us about this one. When the minute this watch appeared on the website, I ordered it. I just loved it. I mean, I've always loved the handheart, this look, but when they came out with this one, you know, because they have others that they make, but this is the actual uh, true type 20 that they mm -hmm. made. Um, I just uh, went on the website, put in my pre-order, and I got it about six weeks later because they had to import it. And uh, I don't regret it a minute. Um, the the um, It's hand wine. Um you know, it's, it's, which keeps it thin um, at, at, well, for a chronograph, 14, about 14.4, 14 no, 13 point something without the bun strap. Um, mm -hmm. With the bun, obviously, it brings it out to about 14 and a half. And the bun is great because it's not mm -hmm. thick and mm -hmm. oversized. It's a thin, it's a beautiful leather. It's thin, so when you wear it, it just doesn't, it's not cumbersome. It doesn't feel as if you have too much leather on your wrist. It's just a great watch. I love it. Yeah, it really suits in that bun strap, definitely. Yeah. The, the Type 20 dial, just just gorgeous. Really yeah. love it. And this is, this is, again, a 42 millimeter watch, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I heard, I thought there was a rumor that they're coming out with a, a 39 uh, could be a lie, but okay. I heard something on the net about that that they're going to come out with something smaller. No, you want this one, be there definitely. Oh no! This, listen, when it comes to chronos, um, larger is better, only for visibility. I mean, you yeah. want to see the dials, you know, unless the dial, unless there's a small watch with large dials, but for the most part, smaller chronos, I, I can't even see the, uh, exactly. you know, yeah. But uh, this one works. I, and how many watches out there have the word shockproof on them today? <laughs> Interesting point. Yeah, another another less text. There's not too much text. Right. Yeah, no, it's a, it's, it's a great uh, classic looking uh, watch. It, it's so distinctive. Um, if I was ever going to get a watch on a bun strap, um, it would be this one. Uh, it's just, it's just really a cool looking watch. And I believe they came out with, uh, I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it was bronze or another color or well, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought that the Hanhot came out with another version of this, but maybe the, the chat will, you know, drop, maybe they know more about it than I do. Mm -hmm. I love it. Great, yeah. uh, great choice. Great choice. Lovely. Thanks. Another great choice. Of this this one, uh, I know Blue Shirt's a big fan of this watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, th it's the 36 millimeter from uh, like 2002. So it's the 114270. Um, so I have yeah. one Rolex and this is it. You know, I'm not. Well, a correct me if I'm wrong, but I actually think that may have been the. Surprise fuck off watch of 2018. It certainly was. Oh, yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, and, and the, the newer watch, obviously, you know, if I had a choice between what just came out and this, I'd definitely go for the newer one uh, because of the movement and the fact that the, the numbers are loomed. Uh, but this is, you know, I don't wear this watch much. I, only, only because I really don't have too much of a reason because, you know, with COVID being what it was and, and is, uh, you know, you're not getting out as much as I used to. So 
it just, you know, I, I just don't want to wear it out as much as possible because obviously you see the other watches that I have. But once in a while, I'll put it on and I'll wear it. And it, it never fails to impress me when I put it on. I just a good watch. You know, how could you know? It, it's iconic. It does everything well. It, it's an icon. Um, yeah. And the 36 millimeter size, a lot of people, you know, they compare it to other 36 millimeters. But because mm-hmm. the because of the lug width being 20, mm-hmm. you know, it just makes it feel a little bit bigger on your wrist because of the size of the bracelet as it tapers down. Mm-hmm. You know, a, another 36 millimeter watch with, let's say, an 18 millimeter gap with a leather on it would look small. But this watch mm-hmm. presents bigger on the wrist uh, than most average 36 millimeters. And like I have a seven inch wrist, it's not a problem, you know, right. not small. My own, you know, it's it's probably on the lowest I would ever go, but I wouldn't go any lower than thirty six. But mm-hmm. uh, it is what it is. It's a Rolex. Yeah. Uh, now, you know. do you ever look at it and say, "God, I wish this was two tone"? You know something? I I thought about that just before I logged into this this uh, live stream. Uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, but I'm not opposed to two tone. I've had you know watches in the past that were two tone. I would wear one. I wouldn't care. But you know, as far as the Rolex goes, I wouldn't buy it now. If I had a choice between the two tone and the steel, I'd buy the steel. But if I had a two tone watch that was like vintage, like some of the tags I had, I'd wear mm-hmm. it. I wouldn't care. Yeah, it's what it's what you like. It's what the person is wearing. It like. it's not, you know, not what somebody else you know perceives what you're wearing. Absolutely. I, I, I've, you know, and I, I, all you guys know, I've been a big proponent of, you know, this watch, um, more so for my sake, the, 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 the recently discontinued 39 mil version yeah. of it, but it, but it equ- uh, applies equally for the 36 mil. Um, it, it, it's, yes, it's, it's boring, but it's, it, it, it does everything so well. Um, it's a nice boring. Yeah, it flies under the radar as as opposed for yeah. for a Rolex, and it it's really as close to a perfect watch, um, in my opinion, as you're going to find. Um, and you know, older ones in good condition are 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 a rare find, and uh, you know, are are a true find. Um, and uh, you know, it shocked me. To, uh, that they went back to 36 but no yeah hey true you know what the people were clamoring for it so um so but i, I just uh you know I, I i enjoyed the time i had with this watch um and and it it, it served me very well uh and uh you know i, I, I you could do a lot worse by having one of these in your collection. True. Yeah, great watch. Absolutely. My blue shirt says flies under the radar, fits under the cuff. Uh, yeah, great watch. Right. And what, uh, oh, it keeps the comments keep jumping here. Yeah, it's the Rolex you wear when you don't want to wear a Rolex. You, you said it underachieving. Hey, Dan T. What's up, man? Good to see you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, all right. So we'll move on to the next one. Back to the tags. Oh, look at that. A Monaco in Monaco. Yes. That's freaking awesome. That, I- in- that, was an actu- that was a centerfold of a 1956 1956- road and track or something like that i forget what year but it was around that mid 50s era Mm -hmm. uh and i just thought it was nice that i just dropped a watch on it so let me take a picture of it and see how it looks it came out pretty good uh i what can you say about the tag monaco you know it's it's a it's a caliber 12 it's not you know not an 11 Mm -hmm. and uh it this is probably one one of my favorites yeah every time i wear it i just can't stop looking at it it's such a unique watch. It, you know, it's polarizing. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Let me tell you, I had the uh, I had the the caliber eleven, 
And up up until I got my bluesy, that was the watch that I got the most compliments on from you know just non watch people. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's a it, it's it's a really cool looking watch. There's not another one like it. No. Yeah, I mean it's got a gorgeous blue dial and that bi compact layout and that just just the squared the squared um sub dials and the, to match the squared case out of it as well. Yeah. Really nice watch. Really nice. Mm. Mm. What do you think, Rancher? A fan, not a fan? Um no, actually it is a nice looking watch, I will say that. And I'm all for it ever since someone else on another channel got rid of theirs. Then I like it. Now I like it. <laughs> um, you know, and this, even though it's a 39, I mean, it square watches, as I'm sure most of you know, wear a lot bigger. Yeah. It does. Um, yeah. Um, and because it, um, it's not overpowering, but. You know, you think, oh, it's a thirty-nine. It's not. It's it's not going to be uh, that big, but it, it does. It wears more like a forty-two or yeah, or definitely. a forty-three, being that it's square. But a cool watch. Well, since we're discussing the size, I have it here just to give you an idea. If you measured corner to corner, okay. I don't think anybody ever did this. Let's see. It measures fifty-two millimeters. From mm -hmm. tip to tip, corner to corner, point to point. So you know it is, it is quite large. But you mean if you measure it like you measure a TV? Yes. Okay. Yes. Fifty-two millimeters uh, from tip to point to point. Um, but you know when you wear it, it, it's like wearing anything else. I mean, it is a thick watch. It's not too thin. Um, let me see here. Yeah, it's kind of thick. Uh, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yep. And, and I do like it on leather rather. I, I never wore it on a bracelet, but I've seen it, you know, and I just think the leather just works. It just, for some reason, it put, it focuses every, your attention onto the watch itself and not the bracelet. The mm -hmm. bracelet, I believe, takes away from the shape of the watch. Yeah. So, yes. This one, you know, when you, when it's, then that's actually a dark blue band. It's not, it's not right. black. Right. It, 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 it's just a great watch. I like it. Yeah, it's awesome. Can you tell I, us what cars are in the background? What, what's that? Can you tell us the cars that are in the background? No. I don't know who they are. Well, the red one is a Ferrari, and the green one's got to be British because that they that those were the colors. Italy was red and the British were green. So that, that might be a van wall in the, in the front. I don't know. Um, in the back, it's obviously a Ferrari. Uh Who's driving? You got me. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see their faces. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But a, a great watch, Bruno. Well, well, well. Yeah. Really well, nice. Well done. Let's see. What's, ah. So. Bull Boulevard. Yeah. Boulevard. 25 millimeter Boulevard. Tell us yeah, that was my that was my dad's watch. You know, uh, he passed years ago. And, uh, I inherited whatever watches he had. He wasn't a watch guy or anything like that. He just wore some watch. Now, I, 25 millimeters. Imagine wearing that today. Uh, it's, uh, I actually had it serviced. Mm -hmm. um, and it works. You know, I had it redone. Uh, and I didn't want to. I brought it to a watch guy. I told him, listen, I just want you to put a crystal on it. And that's it. He says, okay. When I got there, he said, oh, I, 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 um, I reworked it all for you. You needed it. You owe me $120. I says, okay, <laughs> what am I going to do? I say no. So um, he took it all apart, cleaned it all out. He said it was very rusty inside and it works. And I'm sort of glad he did it because it does, it's operational now. It works. Mm -hmm. uh, will I wear it? Nah, but I just have it as a keepsake. And it is, it is a, it is a, a 14 karat gold case um, on this one. But that's yeah. lovely that you managed to get it working again. That's yeah. really nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, sentimental value of this watch, you know, you can't, uh, you can't put a price tag on, no, on that. No, no, that, no, that you no. just, but the, the facts that, the, the fact that you got it running again, 
Um, and you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a little piece of your father. So that's, uh, right. That, that, that's Absolutely. so cool. Yeah. I just want to welcome in uh, a couple of people that have just joined us. Yeah. Um, Bill. We got, uh, Bill yeah. Dr. Bill Sanders uh, from watch outside. Uh, Bill, if you want to join us, I'll, I'll drop the link. Um, happy to have you. And our good from our good friend, uh, Howdy from Texas. Good to see you. Uh, my howdy, friend. Thank howdy. You. Thanks good for joining in. Uh, I'll pop the, uh, Pop the uh, now, howdy from Texas is asking, uh, what's the lug width on that Bulova? I think it's howdy, I think it's 16 millimeters. The, the actually, the watch um, band is just too oversized for the watch, it should have a, a more of a taper to it, you know, for it to be right because the, the watch band is almost as wide as the watch, but uh, but it is, I think, I believe it's 16 millimeters. I, I don't know for sure. I mean, that, that's a small watch. I mean, when yeah. when would you have been wearing this? I mean, I mean would that have been the thirties or no? Mm -hmm. No, it would be in the fifties. Fifties? Yeah, I believe 50s? this is probably from the fifties. Right. I don't know when, you know, could be early sixties. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Not too many Boulevard, Boulevard collectors out there. No, you'd be surprised. No, no I mean Indeed. on the chat. I meant on the chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's okay. it's a New York company, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it was, yeah. It was no, it was actually Pennsylvania, wasn't it? No, no it was, New, it was York. New, York. New York. New York, yeah. 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 We love New York as well. They're going collecting the boulevards on the mansion. Yeah, right, right by LaGuardia Airport. Um, oh, right, Astoria. that's right. Yeah, yep. right, right. Queens, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, is, is that an alligator strap? Uh, well. I don't remember. I don't have the watch with me. It's, mm -hmm. in, the, it's, it's in the vault. But uh, I believe it's not a real. If it is, it's not real. It's just a, a embossed, uh, okay. probably. Yeah. I think it's like a Hirsch strap or something like that. I bought for it. Rancher, you have some vintage Bulova in your collection, don't you? I can't even remember what the vintage I've got in my collection, but that is actually a really nice looking watch. It's it, isn't it? Nice and clean. Your dad evidently took care of it. Yeah, and, actually, you know, it was, it, the crystal is new. That's why it looks so good, because the crystal was all yellowed. So I had him put a new one on. Uh, uh, but uh, on the other hand, it it was still kept stayed intact because there's yeah. no, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know who really needs to be a branded ambassador for Bulova, but no, sorry, we're not going to go there. No, we won't go there. Lovely watch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, lovely watch. Ah, it's interesting that you had the crystal part on it. The, it really, it's a really job well done there, I think, B-Dev. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's look, really, really em emphasizes a beautiful white like dial. A, like yeah. a madman quality to it, I think. It does. Yeah, yeah, it has. Interesting. So we go from a, a 25 millimeter watch to a 26 millimeter watch next uh, on jeans yeah i'll tell you the story about this watch in 1949 my mother bought this watch for my father for their engagement oh beautiful was, oh nice oh. yeah mom's still around she's going to be 95 on july oh, god 6th. bless yeah. oh bless so, um yeah, I mean, there were a dime, and at the time, this was a this watch was a lot of money. I don't know what she paid, but it was a lot of money back then for this watch. Um, it's uh, there are diamonds in the uh, in, in the indices uh, there, and it is a gold case, um, and uh, it works. You know, it still works. And uh, you know, this I never wear this watch. You could see that the crystal is cracked, and I didn't do anything to it. I just leave it in the vault. Because I don't want anything to happen to it, but it's you know sent obviously sentimental reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that's awesome. It's I mean it's just amazing to think that people were men were wearing twenty five yeah. millimeter, yeah, yeah. Millimeter well, that that was it. You know, back that was 50. what it was back then. I well, wow. the, the thing is though, I th kind of think part of it's the pricing. The the watches have increased. So much in advance, I mean, way beyond inflation. Back in the day, yes, they were luxury items, but people only had one. 
and they were still a hell of a lot more affordable than they are today. True. Yep. True. I just want to welcome in our, our good friend, uh, Junior Johnson. Uh, Hi there, as well with you, uh, mm -hmm. Junior. Good to see you. Thank you for so joining us. By the us. standards of his day, B Dev's dad was kind of a player in the watch world because he had more than one watch. Right. Yeah, and especially when you see the next one, you're going to like this one even better, I think. All right. Nice. Now, that was my father's watch during World War II. Um, wow. Or orator. Yep. Orator General, chrono. Orator. Um, 35 it's, mil. 35 mil. It's got a lander in 48 in it. Yep. Nice. And mid-1940s, obviously. Um, he, he, was, uh, he actually went to Okinawa in 1946, 45, 46, just after the war, when they were doing the cleanup there. Uh, so he missed all that uh, fun stuff. Um, but this watch, for years, was just you know sitting around. It had a, 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 the crystal came off. Um, it, I still had the crystal. It was very yellowed. And you can see, if you look at between the 10 and the 11, that there's some scoring on the, on the dial. Mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah. you know, that happened because it was, you know. But uh, luckily, everything else was okay. It wasn't working. So I sent it a Salzman's. And they redid the whole thing for me. They put a new crystal on, and he took the whole watch apart and rebuilt it. It needed a new mainspring and whatever mm -hmm. all the parts they needed there. And they had to source them, and they did. And it runs great. Um, and you know, it's 35 millimeters. So when you mm -hmm. think about it, as far as how small you know the subdials would be, um, because on a 35 millimeter watch. And back then, mm -hmm. 35 millimeters was... That was a decent-sized watch. Yes, yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that that sh I found this the strap for it because um, I think the lug width on this was seventeen. Um, I think uh, I forget what company had these. They they make um, uh, fabric and leather mm -hmm. together. It's one, I don't know if it's, if it's uh, I forget the name of it, but they they make they make nice uh, straps, and this this one seemed to go very well with the subdials, so I, I ordered it. And uh, I, I, I wore this watch a few times, but, you know, like anything else, you don't want to wear it too much because God right. forbid, you hit a, you hit something and you break, you know, I don't want to have to redo it all over again. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is, it's a nice watch. It really is. Yeah. It, it's, cool. it's, it's got a telemeter on it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got. I must say, I really like it. I'm looking at it now and I'm just staring at it and it's. If you look uh, at the numeral, look at the seven. Where, where yeah. do you see a seven like that anymore? That's what that's what I was looking at just now when you're yeah, yeah. It's almost an upside down two, you know, but but uh, it, it it's just a great looking little and and the pushers being being not being pistons, they're mm -hmm. they're, they're, uh, they're whatever you call those. I don't know the name, non but uh, what are they? Non pistons. Just kidding. Non, yeah, right. Non pistons. <laughs> yeah, straight. Uh, you know. Rectangular, rectangular pushers. Yeah. 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 And and, you, uh, and you've got an, an an iconic movement, the lander on um, the forty eight. Of, yeah, the forty eight. It, it's this is just you know besides the you know again the fact that your father wore it. I mean, this is just an amazing piece of history. Um, yeah. Uh, and you brought it back to life, and and that's just it, it's awesome. Yep, that's a nice one. Yeah, really nice one. One of one of my favorites so far, I think. This one. Yeah, I have to agree. Apart from the uh, Olek and Wasp, I don't I really like that one. Yeah. All right, so we'll move on. And the Hanha, sure. I've got to keep adding them to the mount to my list. <laughs> and the Explorer. Yeah, and the Explorer, and, and the, and the uh, long jeans that you got as an, that your dad got as an engagement gift. Mm -hmm. This one, this one's lovely. Yeah, lovely. this one was oh. given to me by my uncle when I was 13 years old. And let's just say I'm quite older than that now. Um, yeah, it's a 30. Was it, it's a, was it during a camping trip? It, it, no, 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 no. Okay. It was actually my confirmation. It's a uh, precision. Yeah, 
it's yeah. Um, if you look, at, if you notice the um, the bracelet, how thin it is because it's a boy's bracelet. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. This the but watch it's, came with it on that. It's three millimeters. This one, isn't it? It's thirty. I think it's thirty-two. Oh. Let me see. Yeah, it's thirty-three actually. Yeah, still uh, quite a would, watch. Yes, and um, and it works. You know. I, you know, when I, when I was a, when I was a kid, you know, I really didn't wear it that much. It was, you know, you know, when you're when you're 13 years old, you don't run mm -hmm. around and uh, wearing Gruens running around on your bicycle. Right, right. So right. you know, so I, uh, you know, so it lasted. It did. The, the crystal is cracked on the bottom there, but you know, it's going to stay that way. I'm not changing anything. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, obviously another keepsake, sentimental watch that I'll never get rid of. Yeah, very cool Lovely. memories. Yeah. Yeah, great to have little keepsakes like that. I, I mean, it's wonderful when people can buy watches as gifts. I mean, that they, they yeah. really, they really are amazing things that you keep for life, aren't they? I mean, wow. Very if cool. if, if there were only more people who could buy watches as gifts, mm -hmm. and have more people in the hobby really, you know, appreciating cheaper watches and uh, all sorts of watches. Yeah, lovely. All right, so we'll move on to the next one, which is really an interesting one. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Nelgin, Elgin. Elgin Pocket Watch, Model 2 from 1919. Wow. That was my grandfather's watch um, that, you know, was passed down to me from my father, and now I own it. Um, I think... Um, I think there's some more pictures besides this one, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know too much about the watch. You know, I know that he carried it, and I believe he came over. He was obviously born in Italy, and I think my grandfather came over here in 1926 or so, or something like that, or uh, maybe even before that. Um, but this watch, um, is you know it, it's in great shape for what it is you know he he used it but you know they kept them in their vest pockets so they really they didn't you know really see so much uh you know of the outside right um and it's 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 really in good shape really it is. looks absolutely stunning bruno i must say the yeah. dial looks gorgeous immaculate, uh, immaculate. It looks absolutely gorgeous like like the rancher says you know i mean immaculate and it does I mean, work, that, you know. Does really still works? Wow. Yeah. yeah oh, wait, sorry, I was using the wrong word. Let me look it up. Oh, does, here we go. Ejaculate. Does, ejaculate. <laughs> I mean the the gold case, the hunter case, gorgeous. It, well, it, gold. It, it is gold filled. It's not a solid gold case. Oh right, right. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. And the, and it's hands, beautiful. Those, those wafer thin hands. Yeah, I love wow. those hands. Beautiful. And yeah. it, and it, it gets it gets better. Oh, look at that! Wow, beautiful, really is. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they don't make them like they used to. No, they but don't. From nineteen nineteen, this watch. Yep. Wow. One hundred and two years ago. Yeah. Wow. Useful. Yeah, you just think, you know, what 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 just kind of adventures that, that, or you know, the the people that your grandfather, you know, interacted with with this while wearing this watch, and and the things that he saw. Right. Uh, well, actually, it's, it's what they, nineteen nineteen, what they saw was the end of World War One, yeah, and also the say, Great it, Influenza epidemic of nineteen eighteen. Right. So right. I'm thinking is, thank God we'll never have to go through this shit again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> After the First World War, isn't it? So this yeah. is, this, yeah. this, you know, wow, something to be really proud of to have a watch like this at that time. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, obviously, if you know pocket watches, you have your inside uh, case you know, cover, and then you have your outside cover. I didn't send you this. Uh, I should have sent you a picture of it, but. He had kept a picture of my grandmother in between here, mm -hmm. a photo. Oh, so mm -hmm. when he opened it, he would see her 
face there. Oh man. So how awesome it, is that? Yeah, I should have sent you that picture. I don't I just must have forgot to attach it. But uh I do have that picture somewhere. Uh, and I think there's one more picture of this with the actual yep. Yep. engraving yep. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh it's just gonna get to that. Oh, Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Engraving, uh, and, and you know, this is how I got into watches. I'll tell you a story. Um, I was watching Antiques Roadshow, and I'm, everybody must have seen there was a, an episode of, of a, uh, uh, a Patek Philippe pocket watch or something like that that this guy had and found out it was worth a quarter of a million dollars or something. And when I saw that, I said, wow, I says, Mike, I got to see that pocket watch that was left to me because I never really, it was in a safe, you know, and I never mm -hmm. really looked at it that much. And I went and took it out, and I started looking at it. Then I started getting involved with it, and that's when I started to buy pocket watches. And really? I started learning about all the companies, because part of my collecting is learning about the history. Because sure. it, it, that's, you know, like, you know, who made this, and um, when was it made, and what, what company was it? Where, where, where was this company? So I started buying pocket watches, and I, I must have had quite a few. And then I fell out of favor with it, and I moved on to something else. But obviously, I was never going to get rid of this one. So I sold off all my pocket watches. But this is what got me started um, as far as watch collecting. Because, you know, I got back. Then I started buying inexpensive dive. You know, I think we have some pictures of that coming up, too. Mm -hmm. But I started buying older dive watches, and we'll get to that. But this is the one that started it all. Yeah, I mean, I've got a, a gold um, pocket watch. It's a family pocket watch myself, but it's not. It's not working, Bruno. And uh, yeah. I've, I, you know, I don't know where to take it to get it fixed. And, uh, yeah, obviously, any you should find yeah. a guy that works on pocket watches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that would be yeah. a good place to start. Yes. Yeah. 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 Start. Yeah. I'm sure that any watch, anybody who works on watches would be able to, I mean, how much different can it be? It might be sourcing the parts that might be a problem. Yeah, I think parts it's, might have to be made for the watch. Either that or, well, there's so many of these things out there uh, that uh, you can get them for not a lot of money if, if they're not working. You'd be surprised how cheap these are on, online, um, you know, for ones that are not operational. You know, they're just for parts only. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen them sell for like thirty, forty, fifty, sixty dollars. You know, how do you how do you fix this? Is just saying. Did you ever praise this yourself for uh, no, curiosity? No, no, I never really did. You know, I mean, I've seen similar ones selling in the hundreds uh, mm -hmm. for these watches because they're not that popular. You know, like uh, you know, they uh, not many people. You know, obviously, a lot of people collect watches, wrist watches. When it comes to pocket watches. Not a lot of people left that are what that are buying that, that are buying pocket watches or collecting them. Yeah. Well, you see, I don't know. Maybe I, your granddad. Hopefully, he didn't buy it during the great pocket watch bubble of twenty twenty one of nineteen twenty one, where pocket watches were selling like five times. Right. <laughs> See, see, if I actually took this watch and had somebody print Rolex on it, I could probably get about twenty grand for it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the one that the the first Rolex ever made that nobody knew about. Yeah. James, welcome. Hi, James. How you doing, friend? You well? What's he guys? I guess, I guess he's doing. All right, well, we'll we'll move on, James. Check if you're later. there, um, you know, just chime in. Um, yeah, move on to the next one. The next one, yeah. You've got, uh, you know, yeah. What's the next you're, one? Let's see. Halo oh. Diver. I love this one. This one yeah. is yeah. great. Cool watch. I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, so only, only a 36 millimeter one as well. This one, the Halo Diver. Yeah. Patina. Exactly. Look, Lovely watch. You know, the thing still works. Um, I like vintage divers. Now, I say I'm not really a collector, but I do like these watches, and I do have more than a few of them. But I'm not a, I'm not really look, sort of seeking them out constantly. Once in a while, I'll see one and I'll buy it. But this this one, this the Baylor brand was sold by Zales out of Texas. 
and it was named after the Baylor cottage, uh, College University, mm-hmm. Baylor University. And right. they're, they're good watches. They made chronos. And this one, just, you know, I saw it online and I grabbed it. I, I think it was only like 30 bucks or something. I can't remember. It wasn't a lot mm-hmm. of money. Well, also, Baylor has a strong association with the uh, Hoyer, vintage Hoyer as well. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and it's just a nice, you know, it works. It runs fast, um, but it works. And uh, once in a while, I'll strap it on. But when I notice that it's three minutes later than it's supposed to be, I, I wind up taking it off and putting it back where it, in the collection. But once in a while, I'll wear it. Yeah, nice watch. Yeah, I mean, it's one, like one, probably one of those watches like I've got, you know, a couple of watches. You pull them out once in a while and you just wear them and uh, then put them back in the box and yep. then uh, yep. just enjoy them and rotate rotate your watches. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And yeah. uh, just want to say hello to Rick. Um, yeah, welcome, Rick. For, Good thank you for joining us. Oh, Rick, Rick has got some nice watches there. That's for sure. Yeah, he's got a lovely collection, hasn't he? Beautiful. All right, so we'll move on from the Baylor, which is a very cool and lovely patina. Um, an in- <laughs> Ingram, an Ingram old timer. Yeah, this uh, is a, this is a funny watch. Meter. Yeah, Hello, guys. So it's a timer bezel. Yeah, it's it's got it's got a dive bezel. A world time of bezel, and it's got a uh, attack a tacky in the uh, in the bezel for no apparent reason because it's not a chronograph. Mm-hmm. Hello, guys. So, hey, James, how are you? So okay. How do you, hi, James. There. So, if you have a, a, a tacky meter um, on the uh, on the uh, on the dial. And you don't have a chronograph function. How do you actually use it? So I don't know why they have it on there, but I just found it real interesting. Yeah, really interesting that one. And believe it or not, this watch it keeps accurate time. Um, I actually had it on yesterday. Uh, it's mm-hmm. once in a while. I'll you know I'll toss it on just to, for something different, and. Uh, it's 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 just a cool little watch. It's, I don't think it's that big. I think it's um, no, it's thirty eight millimeters. It actually is. Yeah, it's it's a very nice looking watch. Yeah, I like different. I like things that are a little bit different. And uh, this one just you know spoke to me, so I bought it. Yeah, very nice. Very different looking, isn't it? It's uh, mm-hmm. something that you'd. Uh... Wait, wait, you buy watches that you like? Where did this uh, start this hobby? Is, 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 isn't that the point? Well, that's yeah, that's my criteria. Like, I will never buy a watch. I only buy what I like. And there's a few, I have a few rules. I never buy a Mercedes hand watch, you know, our hand, unless it's a Rolex. And that means I'll never buy another Mercedes hands watch because I have one that has a, you know, I'm just against it. I just don't like it. Um, and it was something else that I don't like. I don't, I'm not really into micro brands. I've, I've had, oh, no. I have, uh, I had, to, I had three, I had a Hamel, which nice. was a, I had a Hamel, which was a good watch, mm-hmm. but it didn't have a running seconds hand. It was a chronograph and I just didn't, couldn't handle that. And I had two Dan Henry's. Well, Dan oh. Henry's are, are quartz. Yeah, right, right. And it was a Mecca Quartz. They were like the, I think it was 1960, they're 63 and 64 models, which are more like racing chronographs. And mm-hmm. and I kept them for a while, but I, you know, I, I had so many other watches I was wearing, I wound up selling them. And I just won't buy a micro brand unless it really is something so different that I have to have it. I'm yeah, not we'll against my change, we'll get, change, change your view on that, won't we, Bruno? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not against micro brands. Believe me, mm-hmm. I, some of the stuff that, they make is great looking and i just i just won't buy it because of you know of what i have already and i just don't need to add that to my collection um yeah fair point fair point but, and i'm so tired of all these divers that are coming out well they're, they're all the same aren't they that's the problem with micro brands in the past is that all, they're I, all diver homage to the sun yeah. and they're boring 
I, I'm, believe it or not, I'm not a big fan of diver. Well, I have diver watches, and I have these vintage diver watches. Of course, they're vintage. Of course, it's, you know, but I'm not a. I I'm. I don't seek out diver watches. I actually bought a. Um, um, I had a Damasco D sub three, which was that mm -hmm. uh, diver blue. It was beautiful, great, beautiful watch, mm -hmm. and I just you know never wore it as much because mm -hmm. I had the. Um, the, I had the Tudor, and I was right. wearing that, and I was like, you know, it's just sitting in the box. I wound up trading it back to uh, Watchmen, and that's how I got the uh, the Olek and Voss. I used it as trade, you know, as part of a trade. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but uh, as far as micro brands, I I'm not against them. You know, I mean, some of the stuff that they come out with is really good for the price too, and they, some of the prices are great for what you get, but. It gets a little tiresome. They're trying to come come out with the, the the next best thing, and it's just overkill a lot of times. A lot of times, I, I, I think a lot of the market brands are actually doing well in the fact that they're doing a lot of reissues, and they're actually not they're actually moving away from the pack in terms of in terms of not trying to redevelop the next Submariner. Um, that's the what they're, they're the ones that are succeeding, not the ones that are actually trying to copy the next sub. Right. Right, and you got to give them credit for coming out with new ideas like the Zelos. That you know, they have some great watches. I mean, they got meteorite dials, and you know, and well, obviously, they probably, didn't they? Every, everything that they make, they sell. You know, they're they're, they're really good watches. Um, but uh, I'm I, I like I like to stick with the 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 tried and true brands. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can't go wrong that way. The, sure. the thing with micro brands, Bruno, is that the, some of those micro brands eventually become brands like Baltic, for example. Yes. Um, you know, Timex are using a micro brand strategy. Um, you look at um, Zagema are doing reissues, and they're, they're basically reissuing a micro brand type strategy. So a lot of these brands, Zealous, are no longer a micro brand. You wouldn't call them a micro brand any longer. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. There's a thin line of what you know. That that term micro brand is just something somebody made up. These are all watch companies. Right. Yeah, yeah, they're becoming yeah. watch company or small, or at least we can call them small independents. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're they're a company that are having watches made and they're selling them to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know we can call them micro brands, and you know, for lack of a better term, but um, uh, some of them as well. Some of them of you know are are excellent. Um, uh, but there's nothing out there right now that I can say. Well, I got to get that watch because I love it. I I don't mm -hmm. care who may if I like the watch, and you it's good it. quality and the price is right, I'll buy it. Right. Agree. Once you go on screen, I find very interesting the fact that I, I wish more brands would return to the bezel with the countries on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The world. Yeah. This is. I've seen a lot of vintage watches in my day with it's got this sort of format, and um, I really like it. I really like the fact that you have the world top, the world world timers on the bezel and i've right. seen many many watches with this on it and i haven't seen this return back into modern watches today i really would like to see that happen again maybe yeah, it's not maybe not a look if it was that popular maybe uh yeah it's true it could, my, maybe it's not but um i've been how many vintage watches have you guys seen for this on it? I mean, i've seen quite a few We're not sure, to be honest. I've seen quite a few. I mean, for, as, as a frequent traveler, I think this is a great way of get, getting an inexpensive world time feature or mm. GMP feature onto a watch, um, which which you know which can be easily done on a bezel. Yeah, it, it, the only the only thing about it is you know you have to constantly change according to the hour. So obviously. Mm. If you, you know, if it's, let's say it's 20 after 10 on this watch, you have to turn that bezel to the city you're in and yes. then you'll get, you know, the other, the other cities will appear, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Which is not difficult, really. No, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward there. It's easy well, to do. I, I personally work on, you know, three different time zones all the time. I'm always watching, you know, London, London Paris um, and U.S., Australia. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm always working on different time zones and often looking at Asia as well. So for me, I'm always in my mind working different time zones. I pretty much know where I'm at most of the time, but so I'm always looking between GMTs anyway. So mm -hmm. this, this is a great feature for a lot of guys who are even working by phone um, where they can just do it on their wrist. Yeah. And James, we were discussing the inner, the inner, on the dial, there's a, a tachymeter, but there's no way to actually use it. 
<laughs> There's no mathematical way of using it. <laughs> Unless, you know, there is a way. You just wait till the second hand gets to the 12, and then you tell your buddy, hit it, and then <laughs> tell him to stop, and then, you know, then you can figure it out. But, Love uh, that watch. So, Love the watch. So, Bruno, you, watch. Bruno, you say you're not a fan of divers, but uh, I think we've got a picture of uh, some dive watches. Yeah. I'll explain. Yeah. Like Thomas, he's not a fan of divers, but he's got. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, Wait, let's not a fan of divers. So let me clarify. Let me clarify. I'm not a fan of like newer divers that are out there, like that I would buy to wear. But I and do love older watches that look like this. These so, are this great. Is a great collection of divers, Bruno. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome yeah. collection. Oh, yeah, I, I mean. So what you're saying is you're more a, a skin diver type collector. Like yeah, a, yeah. A I just like the nostalgia. I, I like the nostalgia. How many devil divers do you have? None. None. Really? No, I don't have any. Uh, although I would like to get one, you know, like the uh, uh, the Bolo Well, should I say Bolova or Bulova? I'll say Bulova. Yeah, I know. Oh, I like yeah. But, uh, but I don't have any devil divers because, you know, with the hype with it and everybody wants to like trillion dollars for them because it's a devil diver. I just don't. You know, really? If it comes my way, I'll buy it. If I see it in an antique shop and nobody knows what it is, I'll buy it. They're, but, they're uh, the best buyers, aren't they? I'm sorry. They're the, they're the best buyers when you come across the antique shop. And nobody knows what you're actually buying, but you do. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm having trouble. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you too well. They're the best buyers. Nobody else knows what you're buying, but you know what you're buying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like. Some gorgeous watches here. Do you want to do you want to take us from left to right? Through them? Can, you, can you remember them, Bruno? I'll try, I'll try to remember as best as possible because I I don't have them hit right in front of me. But the uh, well, the one on the far left is what you just showed, the uh, Ingram. Then the one next to it is a little thirty millimeter Burkona. Oh wow! Um, I, wow. And I think that actually works. You know. Um, then I have more than a few Lucernes. This next one is a Lucerne. Mm -hmm. Then right. the Baylor. That um, yeah, yeah. That, let's see, uh, you got the orange the, second hand on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the other one, the next one, is a Lucerne. These are probably it ladies' is. watches. I didn't, I didn't care about the size. I just like the watch. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna wear it, but I like the way it looked. Uh, I like good. I like the broad arrow hand. Uh, the the broad arrow uh, hour hands mm -hmm. that does it for me. Yeah, and I forget what the next one is. Um, can't see it from here. Um, That's good. It's yeah, good Mark different, P. Different, yeah, different <laughs> layout in the industry. There. It's very different. And Chateau, that was a that was a big brand back then. A Chateau. That's the big. third from the right. I don't know what the one is. Be second from the right. Uh, and then the, the one on the right and the far right is a Lucerne. And I'm just very sorry that this one doesn't work. The one the far on the far right. Um, uh, yeah, it doesn't operate, you know. And it, it, it just doesn't it, pay to visible? have them redone. I'm sorry? It's got a roulette dial on it as well. Yeah, it does. It's got, like, a couple of them roulette dials on them. The f yeah, the 6, 9, 12 really does it for me. A mm -hmm. um, couple, couple of them got roulette dials. Yeah, um, and a couple of them got broad arrows. I, I love the broad arrow as well. It's yeah, so do I, James. I love love the the broad arrow. I think we all, yeah, we all we have do. a soft for that, don't we? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, it's such a and good you could see a where for a diver. When you look at these, you could see where the styling keys come from for the newer watches that are out there. You know, they very, very they, French. Love. These are very French. Yeah. And you know this this won't be the I'll I'll pick up some more along the way I just haven't really been looking, but uh, I, I you know and, you know talking about collections I I think at this point in my collecting if you want to call it that I think I'm going to look for something niche something that I want to key in on and I want to concentrate on that mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to wind up moving some of the watches out of the box you know to help finance that but just more for not for the money more for the fact that they're not going to be worn you know. Um, and I'd rather pass them on to somebody else who's going to enjoy them. Um, but, uh, I am, I think I'm going to key into these, um, vintage divers. I, I do like them. I gravitate towards them. And, uh, uh, that's well, where my collecting might go. 
Yeah, and except and very interesting. That, with the exception of like to say the Submariner, most dive watches were actually thirty six or even a little smaller. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Definitely. Yeah. Which is which is really funny considering the, the, the visibility under the water, isn't it? You know, it's all the hormones in the lady voice. <laughs> oh, you know, God, I, I, I missed you, Clive. You know, you, you, when you think about it, uh, you know, talk about sizes of watches. Everybody who was in the military in the forties wore a thirty-three millimeter watch. Um, True. You know, True. Uh, it's that was, big, that was a big watch back then. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, because it wasn't supposed to be something that was in the way. It was supposed to be there when you needed it. And uh, when you looked down, you knew what time it was, period. That's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just, you know. But now, you know, things have changed, and that's fine. You know, everybody likes bigger. Well, you know, it's great to have variety. So you can really choose what you want. I Watch think Brown, you're the first person that, uh, I've come across that actually – that actually um, collects divers, vintage divers. It's, it's a very, very unique hobby. So you, I mean, I, I collect um, do dozens with my daughter, but this is a brilliant collection you started, and, and one you should continue. Yeah. I think. You know something really? funny? Yeah. I actually had before these. I had others that I sold off mm -hmm. when, oh, I, when no. I stopped. When I stopped collecting, yeah, I didn't have many. I must have had half of, the, of this you know, amount, and I wound up selling them off. Uh, well, when I was first starting to buy them, I would buy them and I wouldn't realize that I needed it. the bezel was gone. You know, I liked mm -hmm. the watch. And then when I got it, I said, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Now yeah. my, my thing is I never buy one without the bezel, period. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it, you know, I don't care how good the watch is. If it doesn't have a bezel, it's not going to be bought. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is really. wonderful. Wonderful collection, Bruno. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, really great. All right. And we'll move on. We're getting near the end. We are. That's self-explanatory. Yo, beetle. <laughs> That's a great photo. Beetle. I love. It was my favorite uh, of all the photos you sent, Bruno. That's a great one, isn't it? Is it? Is that, is that a with a, with a you mind if I use that for fist? <laughs> <laughs> sure. That'd be great in your group class. It'd be great, wouldn't it? That is a great photo. That's and, great. And, and to be honest with you, the Hamilton really isn't a beater watch. But I, that's what I put on it. I, that watch is gone. You know, I, I got to tell you about Hamilton. You know. knows my least favorite field watch. But I love the photo. Oh, you right know, right now everyone's doing screen grabs. Tell us yeah, about this, this, this one. Fantastic. Yeah. Tell us is about the beta this vintage one. as well, Bruno. Well, I'm sorry. Is the beta vintage as well? The egg beater. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it was the my mother-in-law's. I think I still have that somewhere. Um, uh, you know, a, Hamilton, this, this is a great photo. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know why I did that? Cause you know, you go on these wet, you know, on watch you see, or the, and a, show us your beetle watch. I said, <laughs> okay, I'll get them. And I did that. And I, I put it up there and they loved it. You know, Hamilton, I must've had, I don't know how many Hamiltons, 10, mm -hmm. eight. I just never kept them. You know, listen, Hamilton makes a good watch, but they, do. They, Absolutely. They, don't, they don't have AR coding, and for some reason, their loom is bad. Mm. And I just never, you know, when you have, when you use a good loom on a watch, and then you wear a Hamilton, and it's just, you know, it's not, it's not terrible, terrible, but it could be better, and then I just never kept them. I must have had one, two, three, four, five, about seven of them, and they just never kept them. Always would always turn them over and sell them, and I said to myself, "Well, that's it. I'm not going to buy another one." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, oh. I think I think this watch is overhyped. My everybody knows my view on this watch. I think there's so many other field watches that have got better loom, better oh. everything, um, but this watch sells so remarkably well. So, I mean, yeah. you see, I don't know. To me, that's the, that's what the Speedmaster used to be. It's the bus stop watch. You get on, yes. you get on it. Uh, you know, you enjoy it and everything else. You fall out of love. You look at something else. You get out of it. You get out of it, what you paid for it. And then sometimes you miss it. Then you look around and eventually with a little luck and a little uh, with a, timing and luck, you'll get back into one for the same price. Mm. And yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty remarkable, isn't it? You can actually get in and out of the same price. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Well, you can't do that with Speedmasters anymore. I, but, I, I uh, admitted that I would buy the new one. New bronze, the bronze version of this. I like quite like the new bronze version of the of the Hamilton. 
Yeah, but let me ask you a question, James. Do you think it's worth eight hundred and fifty dollars? Well, when I looked at it, it was nine hundred and ninety on Revolution site. So, so you know, oh, I, mean, but... something like, I mean, I'm not too familiar with it, but I just in passing I saw what the price was. I said, "What? This is a wind up Hamilton." Uh, probably an H10 or whatever model they use for the wind up. Yeah, it's, it's, uh -huh. it's that much, same model. I mean, it's just a... I, I'm like, why would somebody pay seven hundred? For well, I don't get well, it. Not when you can buy for you can buy. I mean, I would probably. I mean, I don't know if I'd. Buy, I, I probably would buy because I, I don't have one in my collection at all. Yeah. And yeah. if I was going to have one in my collection, I probably would have the bronze um, because I like the look of it and because I've given it so much stick over the years. Yeah. That, you I know, really have, I really have given it so much stick, but um, yeah. I, I quite like the bronze version. I think it looks really good. Yeah, it, I saw it. It does look good. It looks good. You know, Hamilton. You know, I don't know. When you see a watch online and it's nice and big and it's staring you in the face, it looks great. Yeah. Then you get it, <laughs> and you can't see half of the things that you saw online on the dial because it's so small. Mm -hmm. So I, that. I so that so feeling. that turns a lot of people off when they get it and they're looking at it and it just doesn't overwhelm them. The pictures, you know, can can be it's a double edged sword. Sometimes it shows too much scratches, this that, and then when you get the watch, it looks great because you can't see the scratches. When it comes to the dial and the texture of the dial and this and that, and you get it and you look at it and you can't even see that. That, this is the problem with screen renders, isn't it, Bruno? This yes. Is the problem with, and this is the problem with smaller brands or Joma Shop, all those companies, is you get renders. Screen renders mm -hmm. are very different to actually what the watch, the real photo or having the watch in hand is. Yeah, true, true. All I right. You, you, you no, this, this is a great beat to watch, this one. and uh, yeah, a bit literally, literally. Did we get, did we, we catch... Did we get the um, photo of the last watch that Bruno's yeah. acquired? Yep, I don't know if did. you have it. Oh, yep, you did. I, I got it. I added it in. Um, oh, right. we, we got this is the uh, the title uh, photo oh, from the, the show shot? today. Yeah. That's oh yeah. The title shot. I also bought a. Um, if you notice, bottom left, I, I didn't take a picture of it. The Casio Royale. Oh, yeah, and I bought one of those um, Vario um, uh, leather straps for it. Mm -hmm. The Vario uh, is good, isn't it? Yeah, to me, to be honest with you, it, it is. I think it's too. It overwhelms the watch a little bit. It's a little thick for the weight of the watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, because it's a and very I bought lightweight the, watch. Yeah, I bought the moss green, which really mm -hmm. goes well with that uh, bronze color case. Uh, and hey, for, listen, that's probably the best twenty-three dollars I ever spent. I was going to say it is the world's greatest twenty-six dollar <laughs> watch. Uh, yeah, that, everybody should have one. And I've um, had a few. Oh, you want to hear something funny about that? I order the watch from um, from uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. and I get two of them. And you I'm get like, two of them. Yeah, I said, why are they sending me two of them? I looked at the. I said, maybe I, I made a mistake and I ordered it twice. Mm -hmm. I looked at it; they didn't charge me extra, so I had another one. So I'm going to wind there up give, gifting that to some, somebody in my family. I'm just there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And I, I had a few. Got, I just got the world's world's ugliest G Shock watch, which everybody finds the ugly duckling, and I love it. Yeah, I had it's a, a G Shock a thirty dollars thirty dollars G Shock, and it's a bigger mm -hmm. one. Everybody says it's the ugliest one, and I absolutely adore it. Yeah, that's awesome. I had a G Shock. Uh, I wound up selling it because I had a um, Casio Illuminator, which is basically this watch in a different form, mm -hmm. and yes. I still have that. But the G-Shock, I found that I just couldn't see the time as clear as the other watches. Uh, you know, the, the back between the, the – the, the, it just – for some reason, the legibility wasn't as good. And I said, so well, I'm going to do it. It had uh, four. Contrast. Yes, there contrast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, this that's is a, a great, um, this this is a great one. one. This is a great uh, one, isn't it, Bruno? This, 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 this is related to acquisition. This is the latest acquisition, isn't it? The Glycine Air, man. Iconic. Listen, I love. I like glass. I like glycine. Okay. Yeah, I've had one. This is. I've had two others of these in white. Mm -hmm. And and Rancher, no contrast, because uh... it. I actually bought this watch in with a white dial and the white and silver hands. Couldn't see the time, 
And I was silly enough to think that if I bought it again, it would <laughs> change, change my mind. And I did. <laughs> and I said, why did I do it again? I know I'm not going to like it, but I just love the watch. Mm -hmm. Then this came up for sale and I grabbed it off a guy. Syringe I've hands. had, I've well, had the glycine airman number one in mm -hmm. 36 millimeter with 24 hour time. And I just couldn't mm -hmm. get used to 24 hour time. I had a base 22, which was the GMT. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, that GMT hand always looked like the minute hand, and I couldn't get used to it. <laughs> then I bought the watch I really wanted, the DC4. Mm -hmm. And I bought it from Joma. I get it, and it's defective. No. Oh. The, uh, the, uh, the, oh, uh, the locking crown, you couldn't screw it down, and mm -hmm. the, um, it was misaligned, you know, the, the uh, hour hand. You know, the, the GMT hand or whatever. Mm -hmm. I forget what model. And I sent it back, but it was the last one they had. So I couldn't get it. Right. Uh, and that's the real, and it had a Cyclops on it. I just liked mm -hmm. it. And uh, now, you know, try to get them now. These are so far and few between now. You could get them everywhere like two years ago. Yep. Now? And nope. uh, and uh, ever there's since. A reason, uh, there's a reason for that. Yeah, they, well, they sold all their stock on drop. What's that? They sold all their stock on drop. Oh yeah. Hey, okay. James, can you up your audio? You are re you're coming in really much. Yeah, it's hard to hear you. Sorry. Is it sorry? I don't know why that is. I'll try it again. So, you know, when before Invicta bought them out, oh. um, you know, oh, yeah. the, you could see these. Uh, these you just don't see these available anymore coming out new, and the newer ones are different. This is 40 millimeter. This version in the new is 42, and the and the, and the, the bezel is different. Um, mm -hmm. This is pre Invicta. This is this doesn't have the Invicta. The, 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 uh, the numbering system is different, so this is pre Invicta. Uh, and this is like an everyday wearer. I I really love this watch. It's mm -hmm. got a great leather band on it, um, and you can't go wrong. I mean, for the price, for the, and they're. Pretty inexpensive considering what you're getting for the money. Agreed. Yeah. yeah Completely awesome. agree. And I love that crown being so big. I love it. Yeah, it's a lovely looking watch, Bruno. I really like it. I really do like it myself. It's unique. It is unique. Yeah. Really nice. You can use this for the uh, 24 hour sauna. There's a GMT watch, I presume. Yeah. The 24 hour, I just could not get used to wearing, you know, telling the time on it mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like you know i really i said to myself why did i buy this i really don't need it i'm not yeah. flying anywhere that i need 24 hours or you know i'm not in a cave mm -hmm. where you know i don't know if it's day or night <laughs> uh so it's sort of look isn't it yeah it's an amazing uh i i, I had a, uh, a couple of glycine airmen and uh they're wonderful watches Yep. Now these are starting to go up in price because they're harder to get. Not maybe not this particular model, but mm -hmm. in general, any of the non-combat, the non-combats, you know, the non-diver uh, um, looking watches, mm -hmm. the, the yep. pilot ones, they're mm -hmm. harder to get. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. don't see them as much anymore. Yeah. So next, right, uh, Bruno, we've been talking to you, and we've had a few comments that you sound a bit like a. Uh, Someone from Donny Brasco or The Sopranos, but uh, well, I was born it, in Brooklyn, so you know. Yeah, well, well they would have been driving. They would have been driving Italian cars, I think. But you got an interest in English cars, haven't you? Yeah, well, I did have an Italian car, but that's another story. This, well, tell, um, tell us that story. I had then. a Fiat. I had a Fiat. You know, fix it again, Tony, and uh, you know that was years ago, and you know I wish I wouldn't have bought it, but this one. This one is actually from Australia. It's a, a Morris Mini 1100 that was wow. only made for the Australian market. Um, and it didn't look like this when I got it. It basically was green with a white top. And it was made to look like a Mini Cooper. Because what they hmm. did with these cars, um, they put a 1250 engine in. This had, originally had an 1100 engine in it. 
they put a 1250 engine in it and they rebadged it so it looked like a, a mini cooper mm -hmm. and that's how i bought it i didn't know much about it it's right hand drive so i did a lot of work to it i actually bead blasted this car myself i went i i had access to a bead blaster in a in a, in a shop and i totally dismantled the car mm -hmm. bead blasted it got it down to metal no rust on the car Wow. Sent it, sent it to a guy. And this is a 1970. Sent it to a guy who painted it that white color, mm -hmm. um, because it originally was white. And then I managed to source a lot of the parts from Australia. Uh, that little badge on the side has got a kangaroo on it. You can't see, but that little blue <laughs> badge. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And uh, it, 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 these cars are really a hoot to drive. I'm. And you'd be surprised how much room is in this car. Mm -hmm. They're great drive, aren't they, Minis? The, the old uh, Minis. Uh, they're, yeah. they're just getting them. They look so tiny. They feel tiny when you're in them, but they, you feel like you're going a million miles an hour when yes. you're driving. Yeah. <laughs> and believe it right, or not. You're so low to the ground. Quite comfortable to drive. You wouldn't think so. But when right. you're sitting at this, the way they set this car up, the seats, the... the it, it's just a, con but it is a death trap. You got to realize that. You know? <laughs> yeah. You hit a blade of grass and, and you're done. No, if somebody uh, hits you with this, forget it. Yeah. You know? it wasn't, did safety you, uh, wasn't a concern back then. Uh huh. Did you do uh car shows with this? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually at a car show somewhere in New Jersey, I believe. Um, right. And there's a funny story about this because I bought it off a guy and he said, yeah, he bought it off a couple, the, you know, that had the car and I had no history on it. I'm cleaning out the car, and I, as I'm cleaning out the car, I pull I, 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 something in the back. There was a piece of paper, which was the Connecticut uh, registration, not a re but insurance card that had the woman's name on it and address. Now, I had no way. I wrote her a letter, mailed it to her, gave her my email address, and she got back to me and told me the whole story oh, wow. of the car. So it was... Wow. Uh, it was quite an adventure, this car. It was good. I, I had it for some years, and I sold it. Sold it about maybe seven years ago, six years ago. Wow. Um, right, you've, so got, we'll... you, you've got Car as your avatar, haven't you, that you use on YouTube? But not this one. This one's a Triumph, isn't it? Yeah. This is Triumph Spitfire. Wow. Yeah. Look at that I still have, and actually I have it up for sale. Um, that um, That's a Spitfire that I bought. Um, a funny story about this. I, I went to see this car. I was looking for a car, another car. I have an MGB I'll show later. And I, I was looking for another car and I always liked the body style of the Triumph. And it, one came up for sale on, on uh, Craigslist here in the mm -hmm. States. And I traveled up to look at it. As I'm walking up to it, I'm saying, uh, I'm not going to buy this car. It was green. It needed body work, but it drove. It had a good carburetor on it. Um, I had a, a Weber on it, and I'm like, eh, nah, I, I'm not going to buy it. So I left, and then I was thinking about it and everything. So I called the guy back, and he says, "Well, there's somebody else coming to look at it. If he doesn't buy it, you know, come and look at it." So okay, let me know. So he calls me back. Says, "No, the guy uh, couldn't buy it. He couldn't fit in it." I says, "Okay." So I went back and I wound up buying the car. I was able to drive it home. So I figured for the price I got it for, right. it was worth it. Then I decided to have it painted because it was really ugly. Mm -hmm. But I was going to paint it the green it was. You know, If you saw the before picture to this one, you wouldn't believe it. But uh, he uh, – well, I lost my train of thought for a second. Oh, yeah. Um, so I you wanted to have it painted. It. Yeah, I wanted to have it painted. So – I just wanted to do an overspray. So I have a buddy of mine who has a side job. Yeah, on his side, he does uh, restoration. So he said, I'll do it. I said, okay. Then we got thinking. And that's the worst thing you can do. <laughs> because <laughs> they said, no, nah, let me. I'm going to paint it yellow. He said, why yellow? Are you crazy? I said, no, I want to be seen because this car is so small. If you painted a dark color, they don't know you're coming. Mm -hmm. I says, I, you know, so, so I found I was actually... At a um, car show, and I saw this Corvette. It was beautiful, yellow. I told him, what color is that? He said, it's 1973 Corvette yellow. I says, okay, I'm going to want to paint my car no. that color. And that's <laughs> what I did. I met, we matched it up with a Nissan color, and uh, it was exact. 
wound up painting the whole car, took it apart, took the engine out, took the engine apart, redid the engine, painted it, put all new gaskets in, every, checked everything out, put it all back together again. Uh, you know, did the, redid the interior because this guy had a Miata seats in this thing and a roll bar. Oh my God. And when you sat in the car, your head was almost touching the top of the windshield. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So I, the first thing I did when I got this car home was I got my spanners out, right? My spanners. And I pulled that roll bar out and tossed it in the grass and uh, wound up, you know, was able to drive the car. So to make a long story short, we did the whole car and this car drives like a sports car. I mean, now obviously that's what it is, but compared to what else I was driving, mm -hmm. this thing is like, I don't know how to explain it. You're so low to the ground and you're so um, uh, tight, you know, yeah. and mm -hmm. rattles. Right. And, Great, Bruno. I love it. I mean, I've got an uncle who's a big Triumph uh, uh, fan himself. He, he's got a TR4, I think, and yeah. a TR, TR6. The TR6. And, uh, and he he builds them up himself in his garage, and uh, he's taken me for spinning them a couple of times, and they aren't painted yet, but uh, yeah. they're, they're absolutely amazing to run around in, right. just trying to cut, cut and uh really great fun great fun so now let's uh wrap things up oh so, this is in your uh, this is your mgb yeah compared Nin to 1971 this yeah. one compared to the spitfire this is a limousine i mean it, you know obviously it's, it's a small car but mm -hmm. it just drives so the, because the, the Spitfire is f is a frame car with a body on it. This is a monocoque car. So it's built as one. So it you sit in it and it's solid. Now I rebuilt this whole car. Um, it it came, you know, it was repainted because somebody actually backed up into me. That's another story. And so I had it all repainted and uh, the interior was redone. I put those wheels on it. Um, and I did a lot of work to the car underneath and internally and everything like that. And it, it just, it's a, just a great driving car. Actually, I'm going out tomorrow in it with my car club. You know, we're going for a spin. And I'll be wearing the uh, Monaco because I always like to wear the Monaco when I drive this car. Uh, and it, it's, it's the, you know, another hobby, another love. I love working on cars. I've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, besides the watches. I don't collect cars, you know. So say that's an expensive hobby, and you need a lot of room. Um, but it's another uh, hobby that's associated with uh, what you're interested in. I mean, it's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful, lovely that you've shared these with us. I mean, I was just curious about this one because it's a, uh, it, as I say, it appears in your avatar, and it's a, it's a yeah. beautiful car, Bruno. The reason, the reason for this car is when I was. Before I started driving, when I used to see all the cars pass my house, and there was a lot of cars that were great, you know, muscle cars. and like When this one used to pass my house, I used to stop in my tracks and watch mm -hmm. it. And, you know, being I had more than one friend, I couldn't buy it because it's, only, it's a two-seater. Right. So my first car was a 1974 Capri. Uh, they, in England, they call it a Ford Capri. Here it was a Lincoln Mercury. And that was a nice car. I was German made. Um, so that was my, so I never really got one. Then I think it was 2005. I decided I sold off all my guns because I was a big gun collector and I wound up buying the car and, you know, all the money I needed to enhance it, to make it better. Great choice. Great choice. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been with me since 05. So I've had it, what, 16 years. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank I'm you. I have to run and leave you guys. Oh, All right. Sorry, yeah, we're, we're just about to wrap up anyway, yeah. James. Thank you oh, for joining so us. We really you appreciate it. Lovely, lovely talking to you guys. And Bruno, oh. it was amazing to see your collection and your cars. <laughs> Thank you, James. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'll speak to you guys very soon. Take All care, right, James. James. Take care. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Yeah. All right, so uh, oh, Bruno, yeah, thank that, you so much, man. Yeah, an amazing roundup of watches and cars and all things, all things, chatting, all things collect, collecting, and uh, yeah, it's really been brilliant. And uh, 
If any, if anybody is interested in us uh, going over their collections, they can contact us on our email address, explore2 at yahoo.com. We'd love right. to we'd love to uh, chat watches or uh, any other interests with you. And uh, but Bruno, yeah, it's been a great stream. Great, yeah, great, really, really great. Really great. I had, I had a really good time talking watches. I really did. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was great. Uh, maybe we went a little long, but, uh, you know, I think everybody, right. had, everybody had a good time. Oh, we love the stories. We love the yeah. stories. That's what it's about, Bruno. It's about, uh, I, the stories, the stories yeah. are what make it. I, you know, the watches. Oh, that's me, it. It's all about the people and the stories. Right, right. Uh, As I told you before we went on, Bruno, you know, it, People don't aren't tuning in just to hear Thomas and I prattle on right, right. for hours upon hours. They they're here to because they want to hear from you. They want to hear about you, about your your collection, your journey, your interests, and uh, and you were fantastic. I, I want to thank you so much for uh, for uh, letting us review your collection and seeing some of your cars and. Uh, we all had a, a great time. Everybody uh, in the chat is is loving it. So um, thank you yeah. so much. Well, Absolutely thanks for having great. me. I, I do appreciate it. Oh well, you're more than welcome anytime, yeah. Bruno. You anytime you want to join us, you chat watches, chat cars. Yeah, you're welcome on the stream anytime, my friend. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Please uh, feel free to uh, you know to to chime in anytime. Okay. Um, and uh, I want to thank uh, Clive, uh, the Watch Wrangler, uh, the Rancher, yeah. for yeah. joining us. Uh, James Arthur for joining us. Yeah. Um, uh, Bruno, um, thank you so much. And, and uh, if, you, if you really could give us a thumbs up, that would be great. And if you haven't, if spread the word if you haven't subscribed. And uh, you can catch James and ID Guy on... Um, JCB, yeah, JCB's, JCB's uh, his he's got a, a, a great life. The whole yeah, take, ahead. the whole take, uh, which is on Tuesday, Tuesdays, Tuesday, uh, more quite early in the morning in the states. It's uh, Tuesday mornings, uh, but it's Australia time. It's Tuesday night in the in the afternoon in the UK. So it's uh, the whole take, and. Uh, yeah, you get ID guy and James on there regularly every week. Yeah, that's a great, that, great week. It is. It is. It's a little. Uh, it's like about six thirty or so a.m. New York time. But uh, if you guys can uh, can can catch it, it, it it's well worth it. Um, uh, I they just, talk about everything. So it's, I'd like it's a to lot shout of fun. Out, I'd like to shout out another channel, which is a uh, Ben from One of the Watches. He's got a great mm -hmm. channel uh, in Ireland. Uh, it's another great channel that I've been watching, and uh, he's well, he's been on a, uh, one of our streams. He's, he was a great great guest. Showed us lots of uh, Irish watch brands, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So if you haven't already subscribed, so you'd spread the word and uh, get get your friends to subscribe and uh, give us a thumbs up, guys. That'd be great. Yep, and uh, you know we're on when uh, our friend ID guy is not on. Um, so, um, uh, and I'm sure almost all of you uh, are members that uh, belong to his channel. He, he does some uh, some amazing shows. Yeah, um, and uh, um, the rancher has even been uh, doing uh, some uh, some live streams again, so he's getting back in the saddle. Yeah. And and um, the last plug I'm going to do is is must must watch YouTube uh, is watch Art Sci with uh, Dr. Bill Sanders. Absolutely. Uh, if if you're not watching Bill, you're, you're doing a disservice um, because you you learn so much. Um, he, he, he brings up some different watches all the time. And it, it, it's just, uh, you know, uh, you never want to stop learning as you travel down the road uh, in this hobby. And, uh, and Bill's just fantastic. Um, well said, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention something. I don't know if anybody's mm -hmm. interested, but before you close out, mm -hmm. I do have an Instagram account. I forgot a little bit. Oh, cool. yeah. If you want to just plug it. 
It's called Daily Driver Watches. Yeah, yep. Daily Driver yep. Watches. You yeah, daily. In the chat. In the chat or in the in the leave a comment with that. Um, yeah, leave a comment in the in the uh, streamed comments and the, yeah. I with, with wish that, I knew how to do that. that. I don't think I know how to do that right now. But um, yeah, so it's daily uh, period driver uh, daily driver watches daily period driver period watches. And the only reason I mention it is because there's a lot of watches that I no longer have that are on there. So if anybody wants to browse through it, they can see some older stuff that you just you know we didn't show today. Mm -hmm. So you know we'll see. All right, everybody yeah. in the in in the chat, thank you for joining us, um, Bruno. It was a real pleasure, um, Thomas, my friend. I had a great time. So much. I had a great good. time. Good. Yeah. Good. Right. Really All great. right, everybody. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you, uh, in a couple weeks. Next Have time. Yeah. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. Stay safe, everyone.